Hi everyone, Editor Lucas here in the future with a quick content warning. How I Became Yours, the subject of this episode, contains a miscarriage storyline. The work treats it lightly, and as a result, the hosts on this episode treat it rather lightly as well. And if that's not for you, no big deal. We'll see you next time. Hey there, Internet. I'm Annie. I'm Kat. And I'm Mac. And this is I Will Fight You, a podcast where we've been turning opinion into stone-cold facts since 1986. Today's fact, the Avatar fandom got weird. We don't mean the blue alien Avatar. No, no, no. We're talking yeah. about the last airbender. We're not talking about Space Cat Jungle Cat Boy Adventure. And we're not talking about space whales with a magical gland that <laughs> makes humans immortal if the whales cry while they die and they're little babies. Oh no, was that the premise of the second movie? That's what the second movie's about! <laughs> no! Yeah. There's space whales on Pandora that make humans immortal. A different species. Okay, so I'm going to be thinking about that for the rest of this episode. <laughs> right. So just think, it could always be more James cameron in here. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be talking about a specific fan comic, a little fanfic that I've been thinking about for years <laughs> called How I Became Yours, which I have inflicted at least partially upon my friends today. <laughs> I got halfway through chapter one and i was like i can't f-ing do this <laughs> there's five chapters i read three of the chapters but then my internet turned off and my firefox just abruptly closed and then i couldn't i didn't want to find it again that was god <laughs> your computer was just like no 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 more of this <laughs> we're done <laughs> that was god trying to save you mckenzie <laughs> god i love these things meanwhile i have fiber internet and i cannot be stopped Okay, so it's been far enough out and there's been two James Cameron movies in the meantime (laughs) for people to question the name. So we should probably like go over what exactly Avatar The Last Airbender was so you understand how we're departing from the text here. (laughs) Lucas, if you just start playing the (laughs) Avatar opening monologue, good God. Honestly, that would be very useful, Lucas, please. Water. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. A hundred years passed and my brother and I discovered the new Avatar, an airbender named Aang. And although his airbending skills are great, he has a lot to learn before he's ready to save anyone. But I believe Aang can save the world. Long ago in 2005, the four nations lived in harmony, etc., etc. Everything changed. And then the the fire nation nation attacked. Yeah, yeah, this amorphous blob that just traveled from country to country, killing people's moms. There's a new avatar, an airbender named Aang, and though his skills are great, he's not ready (laughs) to save the world yet. But I think Aang can be good or something. (laughs) And he's like a boy who's trapped in an iceberg for a hundred years, and he pops out and he's like, hey, let's go sledding. But then he finds out there's like a big, you know, a big bunch of stuff that he has to do to save the world from the Fire Nation, blah, blah, blah. It's a setting where this is what someone has recently called, and I have fully welcomed this phrase into my heart. This is a hamburger shonen. (laughs) (laughs) This is an anime style cartoon that is made in the United States, produced by Nickelodeon. It's an action adventure show that was made for like boys 8 to 11 crowd, but ended up resonating with like a lot, a lot, a lot of older people, especially girls who love shipping. <laughs> and the executives did not care for that. <laughs> they were so mad. <laughs> But, like, the internet exploded. Like, you have to understand that, like, fandom communities online were primed for some kind of show that was, like, an accessible, magical, Asian-inspired action-adventure show with characters who had feelings. LiveJournal, FanFic.net, DeviantArt, they went 
bananas for this show. Include the fact that it actually had a plot and it actually treated the kids watching it as intelligent creatures. It was like a bomb made of pure good for fandom. Yeah, it was great. And because there were a whole bunch of young kids, well, like, you know, teens-ish, what, Aang is like, what, 15, I think? 14? Yeah. I think Aang's 14 and, and, like, his two main friends are, like, 15 and 16. Yeah. I seem to recall Aang being, like, 13 and Katara being 14 at the start of the show. You know, we should probably just look this up before the internet comes out of the woodwork to correct us. This is <laughs> entirely accessible information. <laughs> I don't know why we're guessing. <laughs> Okay, a quick search on the Googs suggests that Aang is 12, Toph is 12, Zuko and Yue are 16. Why is it only giving me Tom Tom, Mai's brother, who is two? Why are you giving me this information? <laughs> okay, okay, every main character's age. Thank you. Why are you giving me this in listicle format? Why is the internet so broken? <laughs> God, Google's just really started to suck recently, huh? Oh, man. Okay, Aang is 12, Sokka is 15, Katara's 14, Azula is 14, Mai is 15. Okay, so we've got, like, a range here. But the important thing is, the clones are sexy teens now. They're gonna make it if they try. The important thing is, these kids are young, they are cute looking, and we all think they should kiss. <laughs> And for the first season of the show, until they introduced Toph Bay Fong, the Earthbender in season two, and she became like a core member of the cast, there was only one girl. Her name was Katara. She was a waterbender. She was this like wonderfully flawed character. Like she was a well-rounded, well-developed person. And so they decided that she needed to be the focal point of every single shipping war that Avatar The Last Airbender could contain. <laughs> this girl eventually ends up kissing Aang, the main character, which, you know, we could all see coming. He had a crush on Katara from, like, episode two. But also, like, the show kind of spent a lot of time developing that relationship from Aang's perspective and not quite enough from Katara's to make it seem more, like, mutual. So in the meantime, everybody was like, all right, so who's Katara gonna kiss? Is she gonna kiss Jet? Is she gonna kiss... Zuko, is she gonna kiss? We're all too straight on the internet in 2005 to think about her kissing Azula. <laughs> but God, it would be good. <laughs> oh, it would be so good. <laughs> yeah, it was all mostly hetero ships. Yeah, I feel like Katara and Toph would kiss like once, both hate it and never speak of it again. Absolutely. That sounds right to me, honestly. <laughs> that sounds right to me as well. Yeah. That bit from like one of the later Scott Pilgrim volumes where Scott and Knives like kiss and then it's like, it was horrible for everyone. And that includes you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But the main two ships that emerged were because we we're in the era of fandom where we just smush names together for ships. We were in... Oh, they were all so terrible. We were in Katang, which is Katara and Aang, and <laughs> Zutara, which is Zuko and Katara, was the other, like, primary ship. Zutara's better. Why do these ship names both sound like something that Quick Draw McGraw would yell in his cartoon? <laughs> <laughs> There's not much of a line, but it's the way I read it. You mean the mysterious El Kabong? <laughs> Uh, I think Quick Draw McGraw might be too deep a cut for our audience. I just don't know. Hi, hi, hi. How many Soupy Sales references have I made over the years? <laughs> I didn't say anyone got them. <laughs> <laughs> so like Zutara. Zutara is the ship between Zuko, who is the antagonist for season one, and then like sort of the potentially evil guy who's got feelings and is angsty in season two, turned ally in season three voiced by Dante Bosco, so he had a, a little a little angsty teen rasp to him. Yeah, you know, you know Rufio. Rufio from Hook? Ru you know you know Rufio. And so people looked at Zuko and Katara and they were like those two should kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, I'll be honest here. That was my ship. That was my pet <laughs> ship. Mostly because, listen, listen, do you know what I love more than anything? I love it when a character has very good chances of saying the phrase, she'll never see me as anything but a monster. Oh, God. <laughs> because that's my bullshit. 
Yeah. Incidentally, I have no investment in who should kiss on Avatar The Last Airbender. However, a few years ago, Avatar The Last Airbender was briefly on Netflix and a whole bunch of people watched it. And there was a bit of a Tumblr renaissance for Avatar The Last Airbender in which it was concluded that actually Zuko should be dating Sokka. And I think that's very funny. Honestly, I'm for that one. I could be up for that one. I could be up for that one. (laughs) Just two bros. Just two guys. Yep. (laughs) His last girlfriend turned into the moon. That's rough, buddy. Yeah. Now his new boyfriend is turning into the emperor. That's rough, buddy. (laughs) I like any ship where there's a situation where someone is very, very important. And then the people who are advising that person are looking to that guy's side and going like, who's this twink? (laughs) (laughs) That's what I like. How I Became Yours. This is a fan comic that was made in 2008. Like that is basically like right after season three of Avatar The Last Airbender when all the ships were settled. We all knew who got with whom canonically, and everybody was big mad about it. So this kind of exists in the same space as, like, Love Never Dies, in that it's kind of a fix-it fic, where it says, no, but actually, my (laughs) ships are real. (laughs) And I can prove it with a very, very long fan comic. (laughs) And so this came out for, like... Two years. I mean, it might have been like 2007 was the earliest, but the important thing is it it definitely mentioned like season three stuff. This, this comic. (laughs) (laughs) It is difficult to talk about this without just looking at every single page. It is by a person named Jackie Diaz is how she signed her comic pages. I think also under the handle at the time, like Waterbender198 or something. Genuinely wild to put anything resembling a legal name on like a fan work you were making in 2008. Wild decision to make. Basically, every character has been hit with a recharacterization switch and nobody acts like themselves anymore. No. Do you remember the part where I said that Avatar was like an action adventure show with magical like element bending? Cut that. (laughs) <laughs> cut that and now we talk about boys while wearing pretty dresses <laughs> all the pretty dresses are traced from like anastasia the film some are from like beauty and the beast i think there's like some yeah. disney princess it's like this is a comic that is almost entirely traced and like loosely photoshopped and the best analogy i came up with is that it is like a sprite comic In that she will come up with one pose and then use it over and over and over again in these weird paper dolls. (laughs) I need you to know that the font of choice for this whole thing is papyrus. It's papyrus the whole way through. Also, I'm looking at the cover, like the cover image for How I Became Yours. And it's set up like a movie poster, complete with like the characters' names across the top. Like they're clearly supposed to be like actors' names. Yeah. But there's no actors. It's a webcomic, you guys. Yeah. And then the image of Katara and Zuko, like Katara coming down a flight of stairs and Zuko taking her hand. I'm pretty sure this is the king and I. (laughs) I think that specific turn, I think you're right. Uh, Especially because there is an arm at a really weird angle where it's decided she might be holding up her skirt. And there's also a couple of pull quotes here. Zutara, Topang fans, called a masterpiece of art, sweet tragedy, romance, and a moving story that captures the mind, body, and soul, (laughs) says DeviantArt. Who on DeviantArt? Who on DeviantArt? Just DeviantArt the whole site? Who on DeviantArt? And the whole website got together and sent her a letter. (laughs) And when I say Topang, what I mean is that what often happens in these kinds of fanfics is that you have your main ship that you've decided is canon, and then that means you have to take all the leftovers and pair them up so nobody gets lonely. So Zuko and Katara are are the main ship, but then we also have all these other leftover main characters. Yeah. So why not shove Toph and Aang together? Yeah, they're like the same age and then uh for Sokka uh how about uh Sokka has a girlfriend already who's not paired with anyone but screw that screw that how about we bring in Azula and Lobotomizer how about Azula the villain she's fine now she's fine now I'm also just looking at this and there's another pull quote it says a fine display of love sorrow and buidi <laughs> <laughs> B-U-E-A-T-Y, clearly supposed to be beauty, but misspelled severely. <laughs> there is at least one typo on every single page of this comic, and yeah. I cannot, like, we're talking about 
in the like the two hundreds of when we're talking about page count, and there's a typo on every single one. <laughs> and this isn't like consistently like I don't know how to spell this word, like you see in uh, My Immortal. No, this is just whoever was making these was churning them out so goddamn fast that clearly a proofread was not in the cards. No, advance, advance, never retreat. <laughs> and I mean, she pumped these out like. Uh, here's the thing. I, I keep thinking about this comic all the time. And like, look, this fic has everything. <laughs> it's got lobotomizing characters so they can smooch. There's ships that don't make sense. Complete disregard for the cultures that inform the series and grading half grot Eurocentric ideas like grafted onto it. There's bleach traces. There's random appearances from characters who show up in vaguely important shipling content episodes and then just sort of disappear. There's vilifying the, the bitch that meddled with your OTP in canon. There's typos every <laughs> single page. It has everything. <laughs> I love it. There are so many times when like characters look like they are oddly traced and given these like big ball gowns and their heads are the wrong size or their faces are just kind of soupy. <laughs> and then eventually their faces will morph and change over the length of the comic. And it's not that she's getting better at drawing them, but she started tracing specifically the main character from the anime Bleach. Oh, God. <laughs> And using the paint tool to change their hair color and or skin color. Ugh. And now I need to tell you about the plot. <laughs> <laughs> Just the feeling of fear that passed through my body <laughs> as you said that, Annie. So in an incredible wall of text, we get Katara's narration where she announces to the audience over a bunch of static photos of green stuff. That she has been in the Earth Kingdom for three years, pretty much ever since the end of the TV show. She's just been hanging around at Toph's house. And I mean, we're talking about Toph Bay Fong. Her family's wealthy. She's got a big fancy estate or something, which we have now taken to mean that she is, I think at some point they refer to her as a countess. Yeah. I don't think the title countess... <laughs> Is necessarily setting accurate, but what is in this? <laughs> so Toph is like a countess and also referred to as being royalty, which those two things don't quite add up. <laughs> and now she has an estate that is basically the size of like the San Diego Zoo <laughs> and a bush gardens right next to each other. But Katara has just been living at Toph's house because Toph's parents are just, they're not even dead. They're just non-existent. <laughs> Don't worry about it. This 14-year-old and this 12-year-old can live on their own. That's absolutely fine. Absolutely. They're grown-ups now. Toph is like 15 and Katara's going to be 18 tomorrow. It's the day before her birthday. <laughs> and she's been sad for three years because in a Love Never Dies style rewrite, <laughs> we decided that the characters had sex off screen, never mentioned, but now it's very important. Oh, God. And I'm just hearing the we f dirge in my head. <laughs> Can't get it out. And I touched you. And I kissed you. <laughs> Except instead of there being a small boy to be like, hi, who's your friend? <laughs> by the way, by the time we find out that Katara and Zuko had sex, we already know the baby is dead. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, Katara is really sad because she miscarried three years ago, the day before her birthday. Zuko was the father. It's implied that they boned the day after the episode in season three where Katara and Zuko go on a murder mission to find <laughs> the guy who killed Katara's mom. <laughs> and then to seal the deal, Zuko is like, here, have a flower. And then they're like, yeah, let's bone. Yeah, they boned once and she immediately got teen pregnant. It happens. The 14 year old got teen pregnant, maybe 15 by that point. It happens. Like you do. And then she miscarried, not because she's 14 and, you know, pregnancies at a very young age are incredibly dangerous, especially more so in a magic world where nobody has like tampons or doctors. She just kind of, you know, miscarried. More on that later. It comes up later in the chapter. Yeah. Put a pin in that one. 
She decided she was going to name the baby Kuzon, which, okay, if that doesn't sound familiar to you or like anyone who's important, that's because it's not. Kuzon is the name that Aang drops as like a friend of his from the Fire Nation before he was frozen in an iceberg. So like some dude a hundred years ago, some little kid named Kuzon, and then like Aang uses that name as a pseudonym when they're like undercover in the Fire Nation in season three. Greetings, my good hotman. Uh, hi. So that's the only other Fire Nation name that we have that's not someone who's like a war criminal or a mass murderer. <laughs> so we're like, that one. Katara's naming the baby that one. <laughs> Just going through all the Fire Nation guys she can think of and being like, unfortunate. Also, how does she know what the baby's going to be, considering that she has no way she's had an ultrasound? That's a great question. They're just <laughs> like, yeah, it's just going to be a boy, and it's definitely going to be a fire vendor, I guess. Mothers just know, guys. Mothers just know. It's the greatest vending of all. Mom. <laughs> you think that they would at least name the baby, like, I don't know, Iroh? No. <laughs> But yeah, Tara miscarried the day before her birthday. It's now been three years, and so she mostly hangs out being sad. Then we get to meet our new and improved Toph Bason. <laughs> yeah, her personality hasn't been changed so much as removed. <laughs> <laughs> you remember Toph Fong as the, like, snarky bitch from Avatar. Yeah, you know how Toph ruled? <laughs> you know how Toph ruled? <laughs> Now imagine if she's just like a soft and gentle and sweet and also ostensibly not blind sometimes. Sometimes they just kind of forget she's blind. She's like, I just haven't seen Katara smile in years. Bitch, you've never seen Katara smile. You've never seen Katara smile. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not use that as the setup for a joke? Oh, I haven't seen her smile in years since oh, I met her, basically. I can't see. <laughs> Toph, when I was in town, I found something that you're not going to like. Well, it sounds like a sheet of paper, but I guess you're referring to what's on the sheet of paper. This comic doesn't have jokes in it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Which kind of also explains why they didn't name the baby Iroh, because that could have been the funniest thing Katara ever did. It's like, here's this baby that I cannot reveal who the father is because it would cause political upheaval. I am going to name him Iroh, though. You guess why. <laughs> Here's your bastard love baby, Zuko. I named him after your beloved uncle for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> so speaking of a bastard love baby. Oh, God. We find out that Katara has been writing letters to Zuko for years, but he never replied. And then we go to the Fire Nation where Iroh comes in with a maid in the Fire Nation, who is definitely a trace of Suki. Yeah. The dope warrior, Suki. <laughs> she's a maid now. She comes in and she's like, hi, Fire Lord Zuko. I found some letters in your wife's room and they were all addressed to you and they had the seal from the Water Tribe. So they, I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be yours. And Iroh, who, by the way, like all of the screen caps that Jackie got of Iroh here are Iroh in front of a fire. <laughs> oh, God. So he is weirdly lit from below with these weird shadows in the entire comic. <laughs> so please imagine that Iroh just constantly has some fire just out of frame. <laughs> and he's like, hey, so I think these might be yours and belong to your girlfriend. And also, I read one of the letters and it did say you had a baby. <laughs> so... Uh, so that's the thing... We cut back to Toph's house, which I think it's just funnier to refer to this as just like Toph's house, like <laughs> Toph's apartment. We go back to Toph's house and I guess there's going to be a coronation party for Katara because yeah. she and yeah. the water tribes are going to try nobil uh, are going to try royalty, I guess. They've just decided to institute an aristocracy in a monarchy just out of nowhere for no particular reason. A European style monarchy. Yeah, which is very like, oh, that's just what you do when you're civilized enough. Oh boy, we're not touching that one with a 10-foot pole. Yeah, that's the vibe here. Oh god. It never directly says that, but it definitely seems like, well, the only thing that you do once you get powerful enough if you institute an aristocracy and a monarchy, right? <laughs> that's it? That's the whole thing? Yeah. Specifically, specifically a European-style monarchy. 
No research done whatsoever. I cannot stress enough how much like Eurocentric notions are grafted onto this like very, very distinctly like non-European setting. Who's crowning her? Who's the Water Tribe Pope? (laughs) You know, I don't think. Okay, I guess the Water Tribe Pope are still the fish. I think the fish share a Pope hat. The magic fish in the North Pole. Or maybe the moon. Maybe the moon's the Pope. That's rough, buddy. I'm just obsessed now. I'm like, okay, so is there, are they just from the ground up fabricating the concept of the divine right of kings? Well, they decided that the king and queen are going to be the two old characters that we met. So, Katara is grandma. Uh-huh. And Katara's waterbending teacher, Paku, an old guy who lives in the North Pole, they decided they're going to be king and queen. But, okay, but they're both old And enough. they got married. Are they hoping for, like, a geriatric pregnancy to carry on the royal line? Because, like, oh, God. No, no, no. What they're doing is they're going to be crowning Katara and Sokka, the crown prince and princess. Okay, but the king's bloodline is not going to be their bloodline, and therefore, like, there is no, like, family tie to the Northern Water Tribe. Therefore, Northern Water Tribe could argue that either Sokka or Katara, whoever ends up being crowned as the reigning monarch, is not actually their monarch because they're not descended from their royal line. Yeah, that sure sounds like a problem, doesn't it? It sure does! Uh, this is almost as much of a headache as same-sex arranged marriage within European-style monarchy in terms of, like, missing the point and not understanding how this sh- works. Excellent. Oh, it hurts my brain. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Qatar is going to be crowned princess of both water tribes. Yep. Uh, Don't worry about it. And it's also weird that they're, like, only crowning both Sokka and Katara on Katara's birthday when Sokka's already, you know, I guess if you're making this an 18 thing, he's already of age. Yeah. Plus, he's the older one, so he's the crown prince anyway. Exactly. He's the eldest. (laughs) You know, it's also fine because they're just going to be called crown princess, but they're never actually going to leave Toph's house for the rest of the comic. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah, they just see it at Toph's house. They don't actually, like, have any responsibility. <laughs> and also, Toph and Katara start doing the thing that they're going to do for the rest of this comic, which is giggling girl talk. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> the whole time. Because Toph is now in love with Aang and has been forever. What do you mean you didn't notice any of that? Start paying attention. They've always <laughs> been in love. <laughs> You know how throughout the show when she was just repeatedly dunking on him? (laughs) That was love. (laughs) That was love. Yeah, that was definitely love. The love that immediately transformed into, like, simpering fawning. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That was love. Don't worry about it. And what's definitely not love is Zuko with the person he got with canonically. Oh, God. Character assassination of Mai, everybody. Oh, Mai gets it so rough. So Zuko barges into Mai's room and he's like, the first thing he does is like, are you a traitor? Don't lie to me or I'll cut off your head. (laughs) And like, she has a very reasonable response to this, which is, what the hell are you talking about? (laughs) Side note, one other thing that came out of the recent Avatar Renaissance that I really enjoyed was the idea that Zuko's gay, Mai is a lesbian, and they're both covering for each other. Yeah, I could see that too. Honestly, yeah, I can see that vibe. (laughs) <laughs> so Mai's like, I literally have no, what are you talking about, a trade? You're going to have to have more detail. And then Zuko is like, liar, I saw the letters. <laughs> Dude, you got to be more specific. But then he can't be more specific. I am your queen. Do you have any idea how many letters I have to deal with? It's basically the only thing I do. <laughs> <laughs> I am the queen of an entire country. Letters are kind of my job. <laughs> But then he's like, liar! And then he hits her? Oh, for God's sake. Our romantic hero, everyone. Our beautiful, wonderful, (laughs) romantic hero. Our romantic hero. He just beat his wife. There's just, there's a couple of pages here that I just, as Zuko confronts Mai, that I just want Mac to read aloud with me. Oh, God. (laughs) You want me to be Mai or Zuko? I'll be Zuko. You got it. And what's interesting about these is that, like, the author has written... A whole bunch of bolded text that's in a different font because she realized that papyrus is only one case. It's only all caps. So she picked a different font. And then anytime I'm going to enunciate, 
and like stress how a word like drags <laughs> out, that's because I'm reading it as it is written. Same here. Annie, how can you not mention that the alternate font that she's using instead of papyrus is impact? <laughs> it's the meme font. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <clears throat> okay. Zuko confronts Mai. You knew she was <laughs> pregnant. You <laughs> kept it from me for all these years. You very well could have caused another war between the Fire Nation and Water Tribe. Do you understand what you have done? If anything, I kept this nation safe from civil war and protected you from this disaster by not telling you I am fire lady and wife to you and you slept with that water tribe peasant while you left me for that short time. I will be damned before she takes my place by your side. You think that the Fire Nation Senate will allow a love child between you and her sit on the throne? We should be making an heir for the throne, not you and that water tribe trash! I love you way deeper than she could ever. The sooner you accept that. Enough with your lies! I never love you! Tears streaming down my face. Side question. Is uh -huh. Water Lady the title for the wife of the Fire Lord? <laughs> Is the Fire Lady the title for the... The, the, for the okay, wife okay. of the Fire Lord, Fire I'm Lady. I'm pretty is that sure that is a thing that was never directly stated in canon, but was one of those things that was used in fanon for so long, it just became the accepted general term. Okay. It's got a weird mouthfeel, is my main <laughs> complaint. Yes, it does. Because Fire Lady just sounds uh, like it's got some Orientalism roots to it as a phrase. Yeah, it's just like Dragon Lady. Yeah, it's got some weird vibes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but like, people are like, well, Lord and Lady, so that's just the other thing, right? Yeah, but like, depending on like, okay, the Fire Lord is the reigning monarch. But yes. like, is the wife of the Fire Lord like a, a consort or, or a consort situation? Because, and it, depending on which that is, if it's like a co-monarch, then yeah, Fire Lady, sure, whatever. But if it is just a consort situation, then a term like Fire Lady would imply she has power that she doesn't. And I'm like, oh my fucking God, I hate this. <laughs> it definitely seems like a consort situation. Anyway, <clears throat> page two of this confrontation. Oh no, God, you're only on page two of that whole thing? That was all one page? That was one page. That was one page. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, this comic has so many uh, text boxes. I sent Annie that thing where it's the guide text, and he's like, I'm not reading all that, but I'm happy for you, though. Or I'm really sorry sad that, happened. that happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Now I see why I couldn't love you, even when I tried to. My gut knew that you would do something like this to me. What? A child, my! What? You didn't do this for our country. You didn't do this for me. You did this for you. You hate her more than anything since the second you saw her. And what? I will not have you talk <laughs> about her that way. For your selfish reasons, you just might have put our country in dander. <laughs> and all that I have built for this nation. You're a traitor. Stop talking like you care about this country or the people in it. I am your queen and you betrayed us all. It's because you love that tramp. You never cared about anyone but yourself, you charred monster! I seen it in the day you left their little group and became Fire Lord! The way you looked at her said it all, you're the liar! It's important to notice that all of the yours here are incorrect yours, and chard okay. is spelled C-H-A-R-D, like Swiss chard, the leafy green. Yeah, like Swiss chard. He's a kale monster. He's a kale monster. <laughs> oh god. I'm going to pretend you didn't say charred monster. <laughs> Regardless of what you think or saw, at that point in my life, I wasn't with you. Your sins are way darker and your demons are more desirable than mine could ever be. I can't trust you anymore. You made loving you impossible now. You will not talk to me like you now me. You will be stripped of your title. Tonight you will leave this palace. I am not Zuko to you anymore. And you are not my queen. <laughs> queen. For some reason, the thing that's getting me is the use of the word way a whole bunch. <laughs> As in like, you are way to something? Yes. Yeah. It feels weird. 
And I know the characters actually talk like that in the show. But in a heightened yeah. moment like this, it feels weird. <laughs> and they're not talking like they talk in the show here. Yeah. Also, quick note, one thing we have here is there is a consistent stylistic choice, especially in narration boxes, for there to be keywords that are like double exposed and bigger in the background of this text. Like yep. there's an echo. Oh boy. <laughs> like, you are not my queen. Queen. <laughs> and I love it actually. <laughs> There's also the echo text later that just describe what's happening in the background, like servants run away. There are stage directions uh, in asterisks sometimes. I've noticed this is a thing that's not uncommon with web comics in particular because they, these are drawn by people who can kind of draw in many cases, but like don't quite have a handle on conveying things like motion they'll just instead put like stage directions on screen rather than try to convey that motion in the art. In this case, we have someone who cannot draw or convey <laughs> motion, so it's <laughs> extra work. And definitely like another problem is that this is not someone who knows lettering like nope. as a comic concept, like the walls of text, the ways that panels are like kind of weird and mushy in what order they're supposed to be read in, the stage directions, the the occasional sound effects. This is not a comic for a letterer. This was not made by someone who has read Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics. So that's chapter one. Oh boy. In chapter two, Fears and Nightmares, we flash back to Katara. The day before her birthday, while she is heavily pregornant. <laughs> <laughs> She's so pregnant in this. She is literally going to pop any second. And also the artist drew her once with her little like baby face from the cartoon. Except she also drew her in a little dress with the tiniest, most horrifying arms. <laughs> Also, can I just say that the optics of coronating a princess while she's nine months pregnant is bad? <laughs> oh, no, no. Like this it, is three years ago. That's three years oh, ago. Oh, okay. No. Okay. That, like, the timeline on this is squidgy. It jumps. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Also, like, the very fact that if anyone had found out, like, on the Water Kingdom side that she was so heavily pregnant... And the possibility that there might be an illegitimate heir running around would be such a problem for a European-style monarchy like they're trying to say they instituted. Yeah, you know what? It's best not to think about it too hard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we flash back to Katara, who's just like, wow, today's beautiful. I hope tomorrow's beautiful, too. I'm having such a great time right now. My life is so good. And here's my best friend, Toph. My best friend, Toph. Toph, who loves wearing dresses. <laughs> Katara? There you are. <laughs> oh, no. Something came from you from a curtain of fire, Lord. <laughs> you got a gift from a curtain fire, Lord. Curtain fire, Lord. A curtain fire, Lord. So we get a note. Zuko sent that bitch a fruit basket. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches love fruit baskets. He <laughs> sent her an edible arrangement. <laughs> And so she takes a bite of an orange, but it turns out it's a bad orange. And during this sequence, Katara has a miscarriage. Oh, God. <laughs> we get to see it. Oh, God. She ate a bad orange, and the author has this mystifying decision where she starts to hear Zuko's voice in her head <laughs> while the bad orange makes her miscarry. And I just... <laughs> Mackenzie... Am I Zuko or Katara? I will be Zuko again. You got it. Well, in this whole sequence, Katara with her weird emaciated arms is going to be like just falling down and like she sees a little bit of blood underneath her dress as she cries. We're going to have this mystifying dialogue happening over this. Katara, do you love me? Heart, Heart beating, beating faster and faster. faster. Yes. <laughs> I love you, Zuko, but you're a prince of the Fire Nation. I'm not a princess. Because I love you, I don't feel like a prince around you. <laughs> what do you feel like around me, Zuko? I feel like a hero. With you, I feel free, Katara. I make you feel free, Zuko? 
Yay, like everything <laughs> I wanted then never really mattered. Being with you, I know the man I want to be. Hee <laughs> hee, what kind of man do you want to be, Zuko? I want to be the best man I can be for my nation someday, but mostly for you. I want to be your <laughs> prince, Katara. I feel the same way, Zuko. I want to be your princess, too, as I hold blood from my freaking crotch. <laughs> I love you, Katara! I love you, Zuko! <laughs> I love you, Pa! I love you, Cletus! <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about the squidgy timeline. Yeah, okay. What's up? The bit where Zuko screams at Mai and says, you're no longer my queen. Is that in the three years later timeline or in the miscarriage timeline? That's, yeah, that's three years later. Yeah. Yes. What you're going to discover is that people can just sort of teleport around the world now. <laughs> okay. It takes no time to get anywhere or do anything. Nope. Don't worry about it. And then Katara wakes up having a nightmare in the present because the title is Fears and Nightmares. So that was the nightmare. We checked that part off. Okay. <laughs> and she just sort of thinks about how she and Zuko boned and is like, are you going to be coming to my party tomorrow, Zuko? Can you hear me? <laughs> no, we can't hear you. You're not, you're not psychic, honey. Your, your waterbender is different. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sokka is in the story now. <laughs> oh, God. And he is just hanging around at night in some unspecified location. And we have some stage directions of here's woman whining and grunting in pain. <laughs> oh, God. And he follows the sound for a little while, like several pages of woman grunting and whining or whimpering or something. And he finds a sexy ninja. Yeah. Just an anonymous sexy ninja. And I just, you know, the <laughs> echo text. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, there's just like, starts to hear many voices incoherently. Starts to hear many voices incoherently. <laughs> Panting very heavy. And then my favorite stage direction, which is in asterisks, heartbeat sound. Heartbeat sound. <laughs> we have an onomatopoeia for that already. <laughs> we have several sounds for what hearts are like. Just Ba bump, ba bump, ba bump. No, 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 no. Just need heartbeat sound. Heartbeat sound. Heartbeat sound. Anyway, it's like a sexy ninja. She's got a little like half mask on her nose and mouth. She's got like cool armbands and a tube top. What a tube top? Tube top. Okay. And Sokka's like, oh man, I better take the sexy ninja to my sister because I remembered that waterbenders do things. <laughs> <laughs> Please heal her. We cut way back over to Aang, and this is our first glimpse of Aang here, who you may remember- Just a baby head on a man body. He has a little baby head. He has a 12-year-old baby head on an adult man body. Oh, God. She just sort of took screen caps of Aang and did not try to age up the features at all to imply, you know, that he's not 12 years old anymore. Thank God, or else she would have, like, added wrinkles to a fucking 20-year-old. <laughs> she would have. And, like, Aang just sort of looks out over the night, also has, like, the same kind of monologue that just about everybody in this comic has had so far and will have, which is, like, looking out into the middle distance and thinking about your love for interest and being <laughs> like, do you love me? Do you love me? Are you thinking about me? I think about you. Do you love me? <laughs> Are you playing your love games with me? <laughs> There's also then the sudden appearance of a second Aang head with slightly different features, who is someone who is now named Ping. What? Like Mulan's boy name, I guess. What? What? <laughs> and Ping, who looks exactly like Aang, and it's not quite distinct enough that there's two people in the room, so it's like Aang is sprouted a second head. It's like, <laughs> you gotta go tell Toph you're in love with her. Who is Ping? Just a guy. We're some airbenders that were in hiding at another temple, and now we're here again because the show's over and you're doing a rebuilding the air temple, but you should go kiss Toph. She's great. Okay, the show was called The Last Airbender. <laughs> yeah, well. Well, too bad. Now there's more. Now there's more. He was the last. Now he's just one of, like, 50. Yeah, there's like 50 of them or something. They're gonna rebuild. It's fine. We cut quickly back to Zuko, who's like, 
cut my hair, uncle. And uncle's like, the Fire Nation Senate that exists now is going to be mad about traditions or something. And he's like, but I want Katara to see me like she saw me last. And Jackie Diaz is like, I would like to be able to trace Zuko from the show, please. <laughs> 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 then we flash to Sokka and Katara, and Katara's like, this is a poison that only affects firebenders. So this person must be a firebender. It's ginseng lotus poison, also known as Kiss of the Dragon. <laughs> wow, I hate it. Yep. Wait, is this the poison that was also used on Katara? No. No, this is Cusco's poison, the poison for Cusco. That poison? Yes, that poison. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For only for firebenders. And she's like, no one has ever survived this poison before. But if they do, everyone knows it makes them lose their memory. <laughs> but nobody survived. Oh, God. <laughs> How did they know? <laughs> also, we're gonna let her keep wearing her masks because she deserves anonymity and we don't need to check and see if she's breathing or not. <laughs> Katara is also in this sequence debuted her new hair, which is like she's going to wear it for the rest of the series. It's like she's got a little bit of like a bun in the back, but this enormous amount of wavy tresses that like fall down to her butt. She's going to wear that hair for the rest of the show. Okay. Rest of the comic. We get Sokka, who is talking about Azula for I don't recall why. <laughs> but he's like, so... Aang decided to spare the Fire Lord at the end of the TV show, right? Well, then the Senate that occurred was like, no, let's kill the Fire Lord. <laughs> so let's not worry about, you know, Aang's emotional arc of mercy and nonviolence, but also like stripping a man of his soul, basically. But anyway, they decided to kill him, but we also banished Azula and... Aang took away her ability to redirect lightning. <laughs> just specifically the ability to do lightning. It just says her ability to redirect lightning, which famously was what Zuko did because <laughs> Azula could just make lightning. It was a whole thing. Did Jackie Diaz actually like Avatar The Last Airbender? Because it doesn't seem she took much away from it. Unclear, honestly. Unclear. But now the important thing is, let's not worry about thinking about Azula a lot specifically, now that we've met this mysterious ninja with a mask on. <laughs> it's time for the ball. Oh, God. Just another European style. Yeah, just a ball. Yeah. You're fancy. Oh, God. It's in a big, like, Mac, how would you describe the <laughs> set that this takes place in? It's kind of like the Titanic ballroom. Yeah. I feel like there's kind of like some French Rococo designs in here. Yeah, yeah. She clearly just got random stock image of ballroom and went with it. And then, like, the crowd shots are, like, an anime convention. <laughs> an anime convention. Oh, my God. People in cosplay. That's not even a joke, folks. It's really just that. Yeah. Katara is wearing this big blue ball gown that looks suspiciously like Bells from Beauty and the Beast. And she's also wearing a picture of a necklace. <laughs> <laughs> like she cut out a necklace from a photograph and just pasted it on Katara. She, she's like, I'm not going to draw that. By which I mean, I'm not going to trace that. And so Katara and Toph talk about boys. They giggle a lot. The stage direction giggle is in there a whole lot. No. Toph then tries to talk up Katara about being brave and not having any fear about uh, being a princess or something. I'm just going to read this and I want you to <laughs> think, or Mac, do you want to read this page? Yeah, sure. I'll be Toph. Okay, yeah, just read Toph, and then I'll read Katara there, but just sort of like, let's just think about Toph from the show, and then this. This is it! This must be where I come in! Seriously, Giggle, don't let this get you scared. The years I've known you, you have shown much strength that I don't even possess. That's saying something. You just have to go down to your ball and greet everyone in the manner you know already and tell a couple of jokes. Drink some sake. Sake? Sake? They, they misspelled it. Sake. And catch up with everyone. Plus, everyone that I have ever known. Nobody is more fit for the throne than you and Sokka. Really? 
Sokka is so strong and wise. No. No! And you, the most beautiful person I know, even though I cannot see you, you are a goddess in my eyes. What? Strong and wise as well. You'll be fine. <laughs> that person remembered Toph was blind halfway through a sentence. <laughs> yep. I mean, seriously, what's with you people? I'm blind! Wow, Toph, thank you. Back then, I didn't think you would be capable of ever talking like this. You know people will start thinking you're soft, Giggles. Let them think that. I'll just hit them with the biggest rock I can find, Giggles. Ah, well, let's go get drunk. <laughs> giggles, giggles. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, is it gay to tell your friend she's a goddess in your eyes? <laughs> When you're blind? When you're blind? It looks just like him to me. Thank you. I worked really... Why do you feel the need to do that? Just remember Toph was blind. <laughs> there are so many times that you can tell that she has caught herself and like, oh, right, Toph blind. <laughs> oh, God. So Katara goes down to greet her guests and we get a parade of television show characters. <laughs> a parade of look, I remember these people exist. <laughs> and I got screen caps of them. We've got <laughs> the weird musicians from the Secret Tunnel Omashu episode. Secret Tunnel! Secret tunnel. <laughs> Sokka's sword teacher, who doesn't get a last name, we're just calling him Sifu, like that's his first name. <laughs> that's like that big a title. King Boomy. And June, the cool assassin who had big gay vibes, who wrote a big, like, anteater thing. And they all arrived together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were the only ones that RSVP. They all arrived together, and it turns out June and Katara are giggling because they're besties. <laughs> oh, God. The fortune teller from one episode who said Katara would marry a powerful bender is also here. And we talk as though we're, like, really good friends. She's mostly important because that was an episode that everybody latched onto when it came to shipping Katara with people. <laughs> You will marry a powerful bender. Oh, you mean every character in this show? <laughs> Katara's dad's friend, Bato, is here. Okay. And then another power couple, apparently. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait a second. Katara's yeah. dad's still alive, right? <laughs> yeah. Why isn't he the crown prince? <laughs> they say at some point in an offhand remark, he didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so pulled a Prince Harry and left. <laughs> Katara's dad just said, no thanks. I'm good. Bye. Yeah, he's like, actually, I think hereditary monarchy is bullshit and I want no part of it. <laughs> Bye, folks. And then the other power couple who Katara greets is, quote, Aang's famous guru, mm. who's the guy that taught him about chakras, and Tai Lee. <laughs> the acrobatic friend of Mai and Azula is also here. And they arrive together. What the hell were the carpooling arrangements? <laughs> <laughs> what, did you guys get a group rate or something? And after we have greeted characters who we won't even reuse in the background, Toph suddenly says, I can feel him coming, Katara. Oh my, Agni, what do I do? <sighs> Why is, okay, so Agni is supposed to be like, you know, the god of fire from Hinduism. <laughs> some kind of god of fire. Why does Toph invoke a firebender god, I would presume? I don't know. It's like, I don't even remember if Agni is a god in Avatar or if they is. just have the Agni Kai thing. Yeah, I think they only have the Agni Kai thing because that's like fire fight. But they needed a god. This feels like a fanon thing. Where yeah. They needed a substitute for god in conversation. Rather try to just rewrite sentences around the idea of not saying things like, oh my god, they just awkwardly subbed in like a god they pulled from mythology that had a name a sim that was similar to a name that was already in the show. Yeah. But it never answers the question of why Toph would be swearing by a, a yeah. Fire Nation deity. Yeah, confusing. Deeply confusing. And she's like, oh, my Agni, I can feel him coming, Katara. Oh, my Agni, what do I do? And Katara's advice is, go get him, girly. <laughs> we have a sequence that is maybe one of my favorite things where it's like, you have the thing where you have your couple and you've put a lot of effort into deciding why your couple should be the prime ship, why they should get together. 
And like in Avatar The Last Airbender, one of those things is saying like, all right, fire and water. That's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. We're even doing a Pixar movie about it. Everybody loves the idea of the fiery character and the watery character and they get together and they're like, all right, the other two elements are earth and air. Bring them together. I can come up with something for this. <laughs> I'm just astonished to the degree that all of the dialogue between the teenage girls sounds like what happens when a middle-aged man tries to write teenage girls, but it's being written by another teenage girl. <laughs> That's the fascinating part. The characters all get drunk later, and it sounds like someone who is like 60 years old imagining what teens sound like when they get drunk. <laughs> we have Ang and Toph, who are both, again, little baby 12-year-old faces on adult people bodies, who are in love, who kiss in the worst looking way possible. In the worst looking way possible. It's, it's disturbing. And we have, like, Katara, who suddenly is, like, in the shot, and she's like, there, Toph. All these years, I always knew you had it in you. You deserve this more than anyone I know. For weight is earth, without sky anyway. <laughs> uh, it's at this point that I want to interrupt as someone who actually liked the Legend of Korra series. And note that in canon, Toph just f***s a guy, has a kid, f***s a different guy, has a kid, and then goes to live in a swamp forever. <laughs> yeah, living the dream, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Toph makes a couple of babies. And then she's done. Yeah, she's like, I'm good. Ciao. I don't want someone in my house. <laughs> she's like, these kids scream all the time and they're annoying me. I'm out. Not really mother of the year, but you know what? <laughs> that seems like a top thing, really. It really does. You know how, like, every time there's a sequel show that's about, like, the last show's, like, character's kids... In order to have drama, it always turns out that, like, oh, this character you love, it turns out he's a bad dad. <laughs> but in this case, I totally buy that Chop would just be an absolutely <laughs> parent. <laughs> One hundo, actually. <laughs> Aang and Toph and their little baby faces kiss. Then we sit down to, I guess, a reception dinner at a table. Oh, God. Katara's dad is here in the background, but, like, he only got one trace screenshot, so he's just sort of, like, leering the whole time with his <laughs> head down, glowering. Sokka now has his new hair that he's going to have for the rest of the comic, which is, like, no more top knot. He has, like, Don Bluth's boyfriend hair flops. Okay. Yeah, of course. Naturally. Yeah, he has to be a romantic lead now, so he gets dreamy hair. Oh, God. Toph is suddenly like, oh, my acne. I know those footsteps. He's here. Kazuko has arrived from the Fire Nation. Oh, God. In less than a day. <laughs> to get to Katara's birthday party at Toph's house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, fine. So Katara and Zuko look at each other from across the ballroom. The ballroom littered with a slightly blurry picture of cosplayers. <laughs> <laughs> they run towards each other. They embrace. They instantly kiss. And like, there's this whole thing that everybody is talking about the whole time of like, no fear. Get your man. No fear, <laughs> girly. You can do it. Hey, our newly coronated princess is kissing a foreign monarch. That's probably fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. And then Iroh is also here. And he's like. Now he is the man I hoped he would be. This, this is the merging off opposite elements. Never have I seen anything so beautiful. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Iroh, quit looking at the kissing teenagers. It's weird. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing being fearless, isn't it, Iroh? On the contrary, there had been much to fear. That's what makes it so beautiful. Gross smooch. Gross smooch. The way that she has drawn these characters intersecting is horrifying up close. These yeah. lips are mm, not great. Why is it being fearless? Why was there much to fear? What's happening? Why, why are people afraid? I mean, I'm afraid looking at this picture, but what's happening? <laughs> oh, God, the picture of her crown and the picture of earrings that she's wearing. <laughs> yep. It's a whole set. <laughs> Ah, oh, her accessories. I love it. And there's all these like bubble effects and people are crying. And then we smash cut. Oh, God. To nighttime where suddenly Katara is pissed. I think they like kissed and reunited and then went outside. Yeah. Where Katara was like, hey, so what's up? You kind of went radio silent for three years. 
<laughs> How's it going? You come and claim me now. <laughs> and Zuko is like, oh, no, no, no. See, my wife is an evil bitch and I hate her. <laughs> <laughs> Which is definitely the thing you want to hear from a guy in that situation. Yeah, my wife is an evil bitch. I hate her. Also, I found out I have a kid. How is he doing? And <laughs> Katara is like, oh. about that. And it's like, oh, oh, well, that's a bummer. I'm still in love with you, actually. <laughs> we can always make more kids. Don't worry about it. I divorced my wife to come here today. Oh, God. Do they even have divorce in the Fire Kingdom? Great question. Did Zuko create a church schism by inventing <laughs> divorce? <laughs> Did Zuko invent the church? Did Zuko invent a church and then invent a schism by inventing divorce? <laughs> anyway, that's chapter two. There's a sex scene in chapter three that oh God. the person who put this <laughs> up, this is like a rehost of a rehost. And they were like, these pages aren't numbered. I don't know where the hell this goes. I'm guessing here. But it eventually it is decided that there were actually two different sex scenes being smushed together that were supposed to go. And one of them was supposed to go at the end of chapter two. But basically, it is the sex scene that they have in this entire comic, which is a character is like, and as we boned, I felt so beautiful <laughs> and like fire and water had truly merged together. And I was weightless, and it was great. And he is here in my arms. Also, you have to understand that most sentences in this comic end with an ellipses, so it's like texting an old person. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 3. A Dragon's Redemption. Oh, Lord. Guess who? So this is the part where now that Zuko and Katara have gotten back together, they're just kind of together, but now the plot is about Azula. Azula's here. She's running through a forest. She's getting redeemed. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's definitely fine. Nobody's going to be mad about what happens. Nope. Anyway, remember that amnesiac ninja? She's awake and she has amnesia. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, you know what to do. For I have amnesia. <laughs> And, like, she is going to have this weird, vague look on her face for the entire rest of the comic. She also stands up and goes and looks in a mirror, and now we get to see what Jack Diaz thinks <laughs> uh, a naked person looks like. <laughs> oh, no. You know how Barbie dolls are? <laughs> like, shoulders, but then the thinnest waist, no hips... And big bazongawangas. <laughs> oh, naturally, yes, of course. Naturally. Giant titties. Just everyone gets the hugest titties. No one is without the titty. She breasted boobly down the stairs. <laughs> exactly. So like Azula's looking in a mirror and she's like, why do I feel so angry? Like there's so many things missing. Why do I feel like a monster? <laughs> Where did I come from? Do I have a family? I don't even know my name. And so she asked three questions in this, what is clearly a hotel room. She asked this woman, who's a maid who has been, quote unquote, assigned her lady in waiting, is like, okay. She asked her three things. What happened to me? I'm a firebender? And you really think I'm pretty? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the yassification of Azula. Oh, God. <laughs> Also, Annie, I clicked the link on that page that you linked in your notes, and oh, uh, oh, it's bad. It's, yeah. <laughs> why does she have that expression on her face? That's the expression she has for the rest of the comic. Better get used to it. Oh. Like, there was a point while reading this and making notes where I just started pulling up, like, gifts of Azula from the cartoon to remember. <laughs> just remember what she really looks like. Yeah. And, like, remember how she emoted. I did the same thing. I remember at one point I was showing key images of this comic and I was showing, look at Azula and showing her. I was like, remember this Azula and then showing the actual show. Remember when Azula, uh, her hair came undone and oh, she God. was just dangling off a cliff and- So fucking hot. Oh, I'm gay. <laughs> She's so mean and I'm gay. <clears throat> anyway, Azula's going to have this dazed, unfocused expression on her face for the rest of the comic and she wanders around Toph's house, which again is like- the size of a mansion estate with, like, acreage. And she's like, wow, 
The Earth Kingdom is so nice. I bet it would be nice to be good. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> definitely, definitely would never burn this place down just for the joy of seeing it in ashes. <laughs> Why would I do that? That sounds so mean. <laughs> and then she hears behind her, my lady, you're awake. And then she turns around and instantly starts crying because it turns out Sokka is pointing a sword at her. <laughs> she, again, starts crying immediately. <laughs> and Mackenzie, I would like you to read this one with me. I'll be Azula if you, you would it. be Sokka. You got it. Ahem. What are you doing here? I was told you brought me here because I was poisoned. I don't remember anything, your majesty. Majesty? Majesty. <laughs> oh, boy. Please, if there's anything that I have done, I'm sorry, I don't remember. Please forgive me. Anything that you have done? How about that you are the fallen princess of the Fire Nation? How about that you betrayed your brother Zuko? How about that you are one of the most skilled killers on this planet, in which you have killed many? <laughs> Do you remember now? <laughs> Important question. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> Do the characters in The Last Airbender have a concept of what a planet is? <laughs> you know? Unclear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever heard the word planet the entire time I watched that show. They know what poles are, so hypothetically they have, like, an understanding of true north and true south, but I don't think they know what a planet is. So Sokka, is like, so he keeps accosting her and being like, hey, you're Azula, you're a bad guy, actually. <laughs> you are, in fact, a war criminal. <laughs> Until Toph shows up and she's like, hey, don't make Azula cry. No killing a war criminal in my house. <laughs> In my house specifically. Elsewhere is fine. I just don't want to clean the carpets. <laughs> we only really remember that Toph can do things or is blind because she has like extra sensory perceptions. Like I can hear her heartbeat and she has an adrenaline spike. So she is not lying right now. Toph turns into a lie detector, basically. Yep. Azula takes the opportunity to run away weeping. But I'm so, I'm a monster, but no, I don't want to be that. <laughs> no, God. Then there's a great point where she goes to feed some turtle ducks, which, you know, Avatar was full of, like, composite animals. But the turtle ducks that she's feeding are not screenshots from the cartoon. She has photoshopped some ducks and photoshopped some turtle shells onto these ducks. But there are shots of actual turtle ducks from the show. She could have used. There sure are. It is deeply puzzling. <laughs> and then like Katara shows up and she sees Azula feeding the turtle ducks. And it's like, oh, you must be truly a gentle soul. And she's like, your name's Azula. And Zula's like, so that's what they call me. The dragon. That's not what Azula means. Sweet, sweet. No, honey. No, Azula's is it's Spanish for blue. Because you have blue fire. Your name is Blue. <laughs> it's, it's Spanish, honey. Your mom's name is Ursa, because like a bear. And she's like, oh, oh, Katara, you're so beautiful and perfect. Please forgive me. I don't know what I did, but I was a bad person. Please forgive me. <laughs> How could you ever redeem someone like me? <laughs> I hate this. This is the worst. <laughs> Azula just gets done so, so dirty. Like, you think my got done dirty. Azula got lobotomized. Oh, God. She is woobified now. She's a little wooby baby. Remember, she was once like this. Oh, God. You posted the picture of her dangling off oh, the yeah. cliff. Mm. She's hot. She's so hot. <sighs> it keeps being implied that, like, Azula would have been like this, like a little wooby baby, uh, if her father had not, like, abused her or, like, manipulated her or otherwise molded her. Some people can just be, like, cool bitches. There's definitely a societal influence argument to be made here. But I feel like even if she weren't, you know, if she hadn't turned out to be, like, an incredibly manipulative, ambitious, violent person, I feel like she still would have had a personality. Yeah. <laughs> Like, they go through several times, they make the point of calling Azula, like, innocent and 
pure Ugh. and new. <laughs> Like, they infantilize her so frequently to, like, the point where they start, like, tutoring her. <sighs> Toph finds Iroh and Zuko an egg. I <laughs> guess hanging. this is the next day? Yeah, just kind of hanging out. They're just kind of hanging out together. And we have this bananas page, which it's, it doesn't translate well talking about it, but please understand that it is the weirdest screenshots they could have found of E! Ah! What? Azula's here. <laughs> they argue about, hey, remember how Azula's like a war criminal? Remember how she murdered people? Remember how she murdered people? And Toph's like, no, but she's such an innocent baby now. She's so pretty and beautiful. It's fine. I feel like you could put Toph on the whole Azula isn't that bad side of the argument, but I think her argument would be, yeah, she committed war crimes, but I personally think they were funny. <laughs> Yeah, that actually, that honestly yeah. feels like Toph. It was that like, feels like Toph, yeah. You gotta admit it was pretty cool. I was on the receiving end of some of that, but like pretty dope, right? Yeah. <laughs> Remember when she turned her hands into rockets? Fucking <laughs> rad. I want to do that. I want to hang out with her. <laughs> Maybe she can teach me how to do the rocket thing. <laughs> At some point, okay, so you know how in fandom where, like, a character will do one thing and then the fandom latches onto that funny joke and decides that it is an integral part of the character? Yep. Like how Alistair Dragon Age is apparently just a fiend for cheese. Because <laughs> <laughs> he mentioned liking it once. Yeah. Well, this is Uncle Iroh and Pai Show, the game, the tabletop game that he plays sometimes. Oh, God. He's like, since she re doesn't remember who I am, I can finally teach her pie show. <laughs> God. It's spelled like, like, a, like, like a program that shows off various baked goods. Am I correct in interpreting that a lot of things that are wrong with this are just Jackie Diaz, but a lot of things that are wrong with this are just things that are wrong with Avatar fandom? A little bit. I find this comic so fascinating because it very much is like a cross section. It is this beautiful little vertical slice. They all agree to just treat Azula like a pure innocent baby and they'll like teach her stuff and tutor her in history or something because she doesn't remember anything. But she also remembers how to like walk and talk and breathe and like, but she's just, you know, she doesn't know like school. And then Ira was like, hey, so it's weird that she just got poisoned and ditched, like, right outside your house, right? Like, what the hell was she doing there? Who stabbed her with, like, firebender poison? What's up with that? And they're like, eh, it's fine. <laughs> that probably won't matter at all. And we have this big montage of Azula being this nice little wooby while they all teach her things. And she pets Appa, the flying bison. And she, like, sits in a meadow with Sokka while listening to him read a book. And then she has bad dreams about being a war criminal. But she saw we. <laughs> she saw we. She doesn't want, she's not, she's a good girl now. She saw we. <laughs> In another universe, uh, all of Azula's dialogue is just cry typing. <laughs> She's a delicate, innocent baby. She and Katara are BFFs, and Katara does her hair, and she plays Pai Show with Iroh, and she's delicate and has a crush on Sokka. And at some point, she sits in a tree and makes a daisy chain in a big, flowy pink dress. Annie, I hate this. Yep. And then Sokka comes along and he's shirtless and she's like, OMG, is that what he looks like without his shirt? Sokka's now completed his transformation into Ichigo Kurosaki from Bleach, but brown. <laughs> and she's like, wow, he trains with a sword? I would love to do something like that. Which is maybe the most egregious sin to me. <laughs> Everyone in this show does martial arts. Everyone. That's the whole show. That's the whole show. Why have no one? It just really reinforces the fact that the girls are all just kind of sitting around in big dresses all day. And Sokka just sort of sits beneath the tree and he talks to himself and it's about how pretty Azula is. And she bites her lip and squeeze because he thinks she's pretty. This feels like a hate crime against teenage girls written by a teenage girl. It's weird that she's doing this to herself. How do you watch Avatar The Last Airbender, a show that actually lets female characters do things, and your main takeaway is, actually, they should sit around wearing pretty dresses and thinking about boys. 
you can do that with a completely separate set of characters because it's not like you're adhering to any kind of canon here. So the branch breaks, Azula falls on Sokka and they land on each other and they're like, oh no, our faces are so close. <laughs> and here's the sex scene that I was talking about that was actually supposed to be at the end of chapter two, but we're slamming it into here. Smash cut to Zuko oh, and Katara, Katara boning. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Remember when they were in this comic, they're here again. Feels like Jackie Diaz got really distracted by the whole Azula Sokka thing. And I was like, oh wait, this is ostensibly. I hope you don't know where limbs go. <laughs> limbs are everywhere oh god there's so many limbs everywhere <laughs> this i sent key these chapters and made her outline the anatomy for me <gasps> oh my god do you have those uh i'd have to find them uh, she was not very pleased with this <laughs> <laughs> she told me i'm only doing one page and made me pick a page it is very confusing where anyone's <laughs> hands are. She like, Jackie Diaz just makes like one pose for the sex scene and then just sort of tilts the models around. And it's always really dark. So you can't really tell where anyone is or what anybody's supposed to be doing. But you have all this like narration over it. So you've got like this weird purple prosy shit. And then Katara is like, this are right again and I can dream. And then we also cut to this idea where apparently she is introducing some new canon into this, which is that when firebenders find the one they love, they mark them. Uh, how? With what? Okay, so the picture is like just some weird little blurry line. But it sure looks like, but the only thing I can assume is they mark them as like, so like branding, like you purposefully like scar them, scarification. What does this mean? It's I'm looking at this picture now. It is so blurry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what this is supposed to be like a brand of. And somehow like he, she marked him too. <laughs> Maybe she used blood bending to mark him. Ooh. Actually, that's metal as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's too good a concept for this comic. <laughs> when a firebender marks someone, you mark only one. If you marked any other, it wouldn't mean anything anymore. So is it virginity? Also, can I just say that when I first heard that bloodbending was a thing in Avatar The Last Airbender, I thought that was going to turn out to be way more metal than it was. I... <laughs> I thought it was going to be like, yeah, you may yank all the moisture out of somebody's body, not, oh yeah, we can use water bending to puppeteer them around. You need to watch Legend of the Kephora. That's what I think. Yeah, they get into that more there. Okay, good. Airbenders also yoink air out of people's lungs. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> they do that in that cartoon. So they bring this scarification thing up and never bring it up again, which sure. is great. It doesn't come back at all. Oh my god. At all. And then they cuddle, like their post-coital cuddle, and they talk about how Maya's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and Katara is the true ship for Zuko, and nobody else could ever be good, and Mai, God. who is canonical, is terrible. God damn it. You know, I think I'm actually pronouncing it Mai, and I think it's actually May in the cartoon. Don't at me. Let's be honest here, how I became yours definitely pronounces it as Mai. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> We also find out here that Zuko has apparently just been commuting between the Earth Kingdom and the Fire Nation to run his country and bone his girlfriend who still lives at Toph's house for some reason. It's a hell of a commute. Yeah, but it's been like three months and somehow in this whole thing, the whole time he's been coming back and forth to Toph's house, he has decided not to see his new wooby sister. He is not interested in the yassification of Azula. He refuses to see her and Katara's like, but she's an innocent little baby who loves us. <laughs> <laughs> and Zuko's like, nope. Don't think so. It's just hard for me. And really, at any point, you think that he would just be like, hey, so like trauma? <laughs> Yeah, I was deeply traumatized by this person. That's a perfectly valid reason, like, need some time before you see them face to face again. Yeah. But no, that doesn't come up. Not really, no. <laughs> because now we have to come back to Azula and Sokka being cutesy babies because, oh no, she heard him talking while she was in the tree. And now they're like standing on opposite sides while both facing the camera, but looking in different directions. It's like, uh... So do you want to go see the cherry blossoms with me later? <laughs> oh, for God's sake. 
And she's like, oh, okay. And then runs off to go talk to Katara while they have girl talk. Oh, Katara does Azula's hair and they giggle about boys. And I just think again about Azula beating shit up in the cartoon. <laughs> and, uh, it was adventure martial arts with magic <laughs> shit. And now we're talking about boys. <laughs> You could be talking about boys while you do the adventure <laughs> martial arts shit. You and yes. You're talking about boys while you're doing it. Nah, that sounds like hard drawing. Ugh. Okay, so Zula brings up something that they're going to start talking about more. And like, I'm pretty sure this is bullshit. But you guys tell me. They talk about how Aang tells Azula about some taboo that there is culturally about, quote, mixing the elements. And how that's bad. I have never heard of a thing about that. Okay. Because I was pretty sure that was bullshit. There's literally never brought up in any episode of Atla or Legend of Korra. I feel like I remember in the cartoon, like, especially in the original one, they were like, there's not really anything that, like, bending can just sort of happen at random. Yeah. But they're like, no. Yeah. Also, if there's no mixing of the bloodlines or whatever, that sort of means that airbenders are doomed to extinction. <laughs> Yeah. Because Aang's the only one left. They're like, no, no, no. We don't mix the elements here. It's, you know, what's funny is that Jackie Diaz never actually comes up with the word taboo. But she's like, it is simply forbidden. This is some one E werewolf forsaken shit. <laughs> Thou shalt cleave to the human. <laughs> and, you know, while we think about Azula, mm, no, we can't read this page aloud. I don't want to read this page aloud, but it's like, oh my god, you're so pretty. You're beautiful. No, Katara, you're beautiful. No, Azula, you're pretty. And you have a different kind of beauty. And Azula definitely says, you have an exotic beauty. Jackie Diaz, what the fuck, actually? Oh, god. Oh, my god. Ugh. She's like, oh my god, you're so slim and you have long black hair and you're so... My brother should definitely think you're gorgeous. And, like, I do want us to look at this page, though, because Azula has this vague, vacant expression on her face as she looks in the mirror with these lips parted. She looks a little like a blow-up doll face. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. And Katara's sitting there like... And know that you have found who you really are. It just adds on the beauty you really have. Back then, your eyes were just as beautiful, but they never shined. And then it zooms in on this, like, vague, non-existent face with no expression. Now they shine very brightly. Yeah, this is definitely improvement <laughs> over what was there before. God damn it. Also, I want to point out that Azula is specifically standing in that pose where if you put your boobs between your arms and then hold, clasp your hands together, you can make your cup size, like, Two or three sizes bigger. <laughs> oh, yeah. She got huge titties. Everyone's got enormous titties yeah, here. She's specifically cheating her boobs in this picture. <laughs> mm -hmm. While, like, clasping her hands together like she's just a little innocent baby. Ugh. I hate this. Just utterly vacant expression. <laughs> she's completely... <laughs> and no thoughts, head empty. Completely glassy-eyed. Your eyes shine so brightly now that you have been lobotomized and no longer have a personality of which to speak. Oh, God. <laughs> you just keep jumping back to, like, gifts of Azula being an actual character and looking back at this, and it just starts to get even worse. There's a version of this that's a horror story. <laughs> yes. In fact, I know that there are actually, like, there's actually fanfic that people have written about this from Mai's perspective. Of like, my husband hit me and then he broke up with me because I was trying to avoid a political oopsie doopsie. <laughs> oh, it's time for a date now. Time for a date. Oh, God. Toph got a new outfit, but like, it's funny because all of the images that they have for Toph's body are like hands tucked into sleeves that are like pushed together because Asian-y. Oh, boy. But this is a sleeveless dress. But Toph still keeps her hands tucked together. But it's like they're in a muff. But it's not really a muff if you look at it. It's sort of like a towel draped over her hands. We cannot draw hands. We must not see anyone's hands. <laughs> you guys need to see Toph's Glasgow smile here. Oh, I remember oh, this. Oh, God. It was terrifying. Ah! It took this one screenshot of Toph with a cocky grin and, like, lowered eyes and she took that, she pasted it on this adult face, and then she stretched the smile and also decided to add lipstick that ran the whole length of the bottom <laughs> grin. It's not good. I don't like it. 
This mouth extends so far and the teeth extend with it. This is like a Joker smile. Yeah. And Toph is also like, you look particularly good today, Sokka. And I don't think this is a joke. <laughs> I think we just forgot again that Toph is f***ing blind. Yep. I'm blind! Which, again, like, it's also annoying because these are jokes that Toph made in the show. And it's like, <laughs> I think your drawing looks great, Sokka. <laughs> and Sokka's like, thank you! Oh. Why do you feel the need to do that? Yeah. When I hit that picture, I instantly sent it to Annie and I was like, I don't feel bad about saying this because I know Toph would have laughed, but pardon me. See? You look? Canonical Toph would say you look exceptionally good today, but as the sickest burn she's capable of. <laughs> yeah. Like, there are points when she has been like, look, I see him over there. And they're like, where? And then she turns to the camera and just waves her hand in front of her eyes with a <laughs> shitting grin on her face. Toph, it's great. That's what it will sound like when one of you spots it. <laughs> but enough about Toph, because Azula's here, and she has one face that she's going to be wearing for the rest of the sequence, which is that vague expression again, with nothing between her ears. Her eyes are a little crossed and unfocused, and she's holding a picture of an umbrella. And they're like, wow, you look so great. Let's go. And then they talk about nothing for a while where they go on a gondola to go see some cherry blossoms. And it's like, how big is Toph's house? <laughs> uh, I mean, I can buy the Toph's house is just absurdly huge, but that should be like a joke. <laughs> that should be like a joke factor of this. <laughs> Toph's entire estate is some house of leaves shit. The geography just keeps changing. I feel like I would never write this, but if I were writing this, there would be some joke about how Toph's estate keeps expanding, and then by, like, ten years from now, it will have expanded to encompass the entire Earth Kingdom. I mean, th this artist's the grasp of the Earth Kingdom is tenuous as it is, because she mentions, like, when King Boomy comes to visit, she's also like, yeah, King Boomy is king of the Earth Kingdom, I think? He's not. No, There's he's a not. whole other guy. Yep. He's just got a regular bear and everyone thinks that's weird. <laughs> so like they go on their little date, they talk about nothing. Azula talks about how she has all these dreams that are memories of her like being a bad person. And she's like, but I don't want you. He's a bad person. I'm going now. <laughs> and then they get rained on. And then they kiss. I need you guys to look at this kiss. Oh my god, the tongue. I think that's tongue there. They are looking at each other, eyes open, staring at each other, and there is just like a tongue somewhere between their mouths, and it's unclear what's happening. I need to know what this titty is doing. <laughs> you know, that's a great question. The titties just sort of keep happening weirdly. The titty has, like, got some anti-gravity thing going on here. <laughs> it's just a, a deeply odd angle for a titty. And then I guess they bone. It looks like there's maybe some penetration happening here. Yeah. And, like, I'm just going to read this part. I'm pretty sure they're boning, but I want you guys to confirm this just from this narration. Never in my life, whether remembering or happening, I have never had someone touch me and it feel like fire in my body. Feeling of life. Like as if before he kissed me, I was never alive, just breathing. Now it's hard to breath, and I never thought dying could be so blissful. Wondering if it feels this good dying with someone else, floating above Earth, almost everything we know to some peace unknown. In this moment, I wasn't Azula, he wasn't Sokka, but together one entirely different person. Yeah, there's definitely penetration in there somewhere. Yeah. It's almost a reference to an orgasm being a little death, but I don't for a minute believe that Jackie Diaz knew that. It's just deeply unclear. And like, this is the kind of shit that happens anytime someone bones, is that they start having this weird flowery narration that doesn't really seem to connect to, and then we fucked and it was really hot. <laughs> so that's the end of the chapter, though. They just bone under a tree in the rain. Hot. Okay, sure. She's gonna get an infection. Yeah, like, if we're, if we're really using, like, you know, Regency romance as the template for this, like, she's gonna get pneumonia and die because she was out <laughs> in the rain. It's true. She's just gonna have to be cooped up for weeks. Chapter four. A Viper's Vendetta. Oh, God.
So, Mai's back in the comic. Oh, good. We missed Mai. <laughs> and now she has an older brother. Oh, God. This is an original character. Mai was the oldest sibling in the cartoon. She has an older brother now. His name is Sho. Okay. And I think his name is Sho because my show sounds like Pi Show the game. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> And Mai and Sho talk. Apparently Mai poisoned Azula, so she couldn't blackmail Mai about Katara being pregnant. Three years later? Three years later. How did Azula find out about it? Where has Azula been? Why was she dressed like a ninja? Like a sexy ninja? Why did she just sort of land outside Toph's house? Everything's unclear. But Mai also confirms that she poisoned Katara with a bad orange. Oh, for God's sake. Did she put poison in the orange or was it just a really shitty orange? <laughs> Unclear. I don't know of any citrus that can just like make you have an instant miscarriage. There's also like something there with regards to like, oh, yeah, well, she's got this poison that only kills firebenders. As they kept saying the baby was a firebender. Maybe she used the same poison. I don't. Uh, but of course, like, this comic isn't that smart. <laughs> no, and that would make sense. That would be an interesting way to do it. But no, it's just bad orange. And now the characters are all hanging around getting drunk with Uncle Iroh. <laughs> Uncle Iroh's still lit by fire. And he's still talking about Pie Show. How good would it be to smoke weed with Uncle Iroh, though? <laughs> oh, it would be so good. Sesh Gremlin Iroh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they all have, like, coconuts with, like, little straws and orange <laughs> slices, and that's how they're getting drunk. Okay, sure. Vacation juice. And they're all like, ha ha, hiccup, I'm drunk, what was I doing? Oh, God. Okay, so drunk people written by someone who has never been drunk or been around someone who's drunk. Correct. Uncle Ira talks about Pite Show again, and then... We smash cut to Azula waking up crying again because Azula just sort of cries all the time now from another nightmare or something. She is apparently in a bed now in Sokka's room, I guess. And she's like breathing heavy. How can anyone forgive me when I can't even forgive myself? <laughs> <laughs> she's sad. She doesn't no, want to be God a bad sake. guy anymore. God damn it. She's just so gentle and kind. <laughs> I hate this. I think Sokka talks to Azula or he does another narration where he's like, yeah, so like, hey, you want to hear about your dad? So his name was Ozai. We executed him. The Fire Nation Senate that exists now executed him. And Azula's like, I'm glad he's dead. I'm a good little baby now. <laughs> And now that scene's over, because now it's time for Toph and Aang <laughs> and their little baby faces. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> Annie, are these two going to f*** on screen? I need to know now. Not yet. <laughs> oh, are they going to? Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> With their little baby faces. No. <laughs> but first, you need to see Toph's 12-year-old face on top of a pair of big bazongas. <laughs> no. With an incredibly prominent nipple. <laughs> oh, God. Annie, I hate this. <laughs> yep. Also, there's something about this page in particular that looks like very vectorized. Egg's face looks so sinister, too. He's supposed to be relaxed or something, but it's like, it is something in the carefully neutral expression that says, I'm going to take you out <laughs> into an alley and I'm going to stab you. <laughs> and Aang's like, Toph, babe, wake up. I need to take you someplace. And she's like, but it's like, we went to bed four hours ago. Somehow I know this. It's so early. Somehow I know this. And Aang's like, no, no, no. It can't wait till later. Where I want to take you won't look the same when it's a different time of day. She's blind! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, what's with you people? And then as an absolute insult, he's like, I need to ask you, do you love me? And do you trust me? Fuck you! You can't evoke the dreamy Aladdin line! <laughs> and like... There is this, there's this page where she's like, I love you very much, Aang, and of course I trust you. And he's like, then get up, fly with me. And this page just shows 
<laughs> I cannot tell you why this is so fucking funny to me, but it's like the sunrise over water. And there's this little picture of Aang on his glider and Toph just like latching on to him from the bottom. It's so incredibly bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, you get the sense that they would just, like, lift the animation cell just up. Like Poochie going back to his home planet. <laughs> like, whoop! Oh, God, it's it's not good. Aang takes her to a mountaintop. He's like, oh, you know what? I come here to think sometimes. And, uh, I... Uh, oh, that's right, you're blind. But trust me, it's a really nice view. <laughs> <laughs> He's just remembering this now. Again, advance, advance, never retreat. And he's like, but also, will you marry me? Let me give you a Water Tribe betrothal necklace oh, with God. an Earth Element symbol on it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the Water Tribe betrothal necklace thing is not ubiquitous to the whole country, but the fanon just kind of said, yes, it should be. <laughs> and so, like, it does another one of those things where it's like, yeah, fire and water and earth and sky, and they should definitely belong to each other. Oh. <sighs> Mackenzie, would you like to read Aang's proposal here? Yeah, sure. Tough. I may have spent most of this lifetime in the skies, but I feel at home when I'm on the ground. The earth is more beautiful to me than any sky I can fly in, because you are in it with me. But loving you still makes me feel light as air. Let me be your air, your breath, and let me be your skies that allow you to dream. Let me be this vast space all around you, always there around you, no more wondering if I am there. And please, I ask, let me come home to the ground where you have made me stand still, because here I am rooted and strong, and here I can rest. And you, I ask this question, Toph Bifong, <laughs> will you be my wife? Yes! <laughs> what a proposal, folks. Oh, boy. Toph Bifong, will you be my wife? I love Toph Bifong. Is it spelled like beef? Like, like, like... B-E-F-O-N-G. One word. Oh, Toph Bifong. Toph Bifong. Well, at least it's not beef as in the, as in the meat beef. <laughs> <laughs> It could have been worse. I'm so defeated by this webcomic. <laughs> <laughs> I am beaten down. I am tired. We're only on chapter four. We're getting there. We are getting so close. <laughs> but first, let's talk about Foy. Yeah! Because oh. we switch back to Katara and Azula talking about their date. And she's like, oh my God, you have such a big crush. You're blushing. And she's like, OMG, Katara, shut up. I do not. <laughs> And then Toph is like, hey, guys, notice anything different about me? And she's pointing at her throat where she's got the necklace. And they drop their teacups and they're like, ah! <laughs> and, then, and then we have to cut to the scene with the boys, too. Oh. And they're getting out their feelings by swords <laughs> and being two identical Ichigo's Kurosaki from Bleach. <laughs> <laughs> Like, 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 this is such an important series of pages here. It is my favorite because we have these two boys. I'm just going to put this in the chat, too, just so we're all looking at this page. Oh, I'm looking at it. Uh-huh. It's two identical boys. And then Aang shows up and she's like, ha ha, hey, nerds, I finally asked Puff to marry me. And then they... Hoist him up on their shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like adult swim animation, Eddie. This looks like Aqua Teen Hunger Force. They're in the same poses as before with their hands up. Still like with their torsos at like a three quarter thing. Aang has the same torso now. So it's three torsos that are exactly the same. One of them's mirrored. The arms are both raised like... They're trying to make, I don't know, a big diamond with their fingers. <laughs> Aang is lifted on top of them. And they're like, yay, dude, we're all gonna get wasted to celebrate. <laughs> this I got to hear. <laughs> and then, I guess to carry Aang somewhere, the whole Aang model is rotated 90 <laughs> degrees. So it's lying down. <laughs> Somehow. Pose remains exactly the same. <laughs> This is the perfect page of comics. <laughs> I love this page. I think about it so often. <laughs> they just turn him 90 degrees. 
<laughs> These three identical torsos. This I got to hear. <laughs> this this looks like a, a fake webcomic that somebody made <laughs> as a joke. But it's completely <laughs> earnest. <laughs> Uh, it does though it looks exactly like some like a goof <laughs> i just can't handle this it's a sprite comic this is a sprite comic it made a couple of poses and then just sort of like manipulated them to kind of look like something oh it's a sprite comic but made with paper cutouts and traces and i love it this is like the space ghost coast to coast every time i move my arm it costs cartoon <laughs> network 46 dollars <laughs> Forty-two, eighty-four. <laughs> That's exactly what it feels like. We cut back to Mai briefly because she and Sho are making their travel plans to go to Toph's house and kill people. And they're like, "Yeah, Zuko is gonna be leaving soon, and he'll be taking Aang with him. So now we can go kill Katara or whatever." <laughs> And after that tantalizing brief idea of a plot happening, we're back to all three of our bleach boys just being bros, hanging out. There's this dialogue where Sokka and Aang are like, Zuko, come help us make a fire. Aang sucks at making a fire. Lol, I do not. Aang can firebend? <laughs> Aang is the avatar. Aang is literally the avatar. He can firebend. Aang can just make fire wherever he is. It is literally one of the most important things that he had to learn how to do. He's God. <laughs> he is the Avatar. He is all, like, I don't understand. Did you forget? Did you forget what the premise of the show was? Do you actually <laughs> like this show? <laughs> and then Sokka sits down with Zuko and he's like, Hey, so do you mind if I bone your sister? And he's like, the sister I still haven't seen in like eight <laughs> months since she's been like a little wooby baby. It's been eight months. It's been eight months now. I think maybe nine. We might have a full gestation here, which I don't think was on purpose. <laughs> oh, God. And he's like, hey, so do you mind if I bang your sister? And he's like, yeah, I see how you look at each other. I, you do? You are good for each other. You've not seen her yet. Yeah, he really has, and he's like, oh, yeah, you're great. Sokka's face is also fully anamorphed into, like, someone completely different now. Oh, my God. Like, this isn't even a bleach face. I have clicked this. Who is he? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, my God. And Zuko's like, yeah, you two are really happy, and we've been best friends for a couple of years. You should be with my sister. Who am I to stand in the way of love? It's like, you don't even like your war criminal sister. <laughs> <laughs> and then Toph wakes up from a dream and she's horny. Oh, God. And she's decided that she's going to have sex with Aang. And somehow she phrases it because of this comic into, I want to give him all of me. And not Toph mm. Bay Fong, who would probably be like, I'm going to peg that twink with a rock. <laughs> 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 also, can we? I'm going to give him all of me is such like bullshit. Teenage girl, unhealthy attitude towards sex. Shit. Yep. I guess Toph is technically what 15 years old right now, so maybe she would have an unhealthy attitude. But Toph Bay Fong would not have an unhealthy attitude about this. And this is the part where they actually do have a sex scene where they have just like creepy, weird carapaces with little 12 year old baby heads on top. Mm. <laughs> I just mm. I have so many sequences in here where I'm just talking about baby heads where I link to them because it's horrible looking. I do not like Aang's ab carapace. No, I don't like his ab carapace. I especially don't like his head in profile. No, I don't either. Because he has an enormous baby head and little tiny eyes. And then like the most detailed Adam's apple known to man. <laughs> Toph has another sequence where she's just sort of like, it's a very weirdly traced sex shot with Toph on it. And she's just sort of like, oh, I feel weightless and vulnerable and it's so great. And it's awesome to have this beautiful sex. And again, I keep thinking about Toph Bay Fong, who banged two dudes, got pregnant <laughs> and was done and fucked off to a swamp. <laughs> Swamp time, perhaps you require it. <laughs> <laughs> After their 
they're done fucking, we cut to the next day where it's been eight months since Azula got yassified. <laughs> <laughs> this is a horror movie. <laughs> Oh, speaking of horror movies, we cut to, like, Iroh and, and Azula are having a conversation about how, like, great she is. Zuko, when Sokka was talking about, hey, do you mind if I bang your sister? Zuko was like, yeah, I think I'm going to actually, like, make eye contact with her tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably get that over with before you bang my sister, although didn't they already bang? They would already banged against a tree. So Sokka is really more begging forgiveness than asking permission. Yeah. So when Zula and, and, and Iroh are hanging out, I, oh, oof, oof. Iroh still has that, like, lighting under his face that makes him look really sinister, except now he's talking about how, like, Azula is only pretty now. Okay, like, oh, God. Mac, do you want to read this one with me? Yes, sure. So I'll be Azula. Oh, my, that is funny. I never would have thought Zuko to be that sensitive. He used to get so mad so quick, but it had its ups and downs. Yeah, like the part where his dad burned his face off. <laughs> <laughs> How is he, Uncle? I do wonder about him. After all, it's been eight months and I still haven't seen him. Well, Azula, these things take time. He will see you before you know it, trust me. I don't know. After all the things I've done, I wouldn't blame him if he hates me. I just... I lost you once. I don't want to lose you. You're all the family I have left now. Now you can never lose me, my precious niece. The journey from who you were into who you are now was painful, I bet. But I always had hope for that you one day, and you would become the beautiful princess I always hoped you'd be. And that you are, and I am, so proud of you. I'm so proud that you're a dainty maiden. <laughs> <laughs> You little yossified wooby baby. <laughs> and again, like he has this underlighting, so he's got these really sinister shadows. So it's really extra like. <laughs> and Azula's going to cry again. But before she cries, Zuko is here again. His head has been pasted onto an earlier pose that belonged to Sokka in chapter one. And he's like, ha ha. Hi, Azula. You're my sister. Let's be pals again, but only because you're like a delicate flower maiden now. <laughs> if you start to demonstrate anything resembling a personality, this is the whole thing's off. <laughs> and then Iroh comes in with a further prize for being a lobotomized, like, personality list child. He has your mom now. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's oh Ursa, God. the missing mother from the TV show. And she's like, hey. I had to wait until your sister became a weepy, drippy maiden and you turned into Ichigo from Bleach. I had to wait until then to reveal myself. I hate this. Now, now I can truly love you. Now we can be a family again. <laughs> My love is completely conditional. <laughs> it really is. Can I just also say that, like, I know the comics also bring Ursa back, I believe. And I just think that that story beat works so much better if, like, she just disappeared and we never saw her again, but everyone knew that, like, the Fire Lord had her executed or something. Yeah. Like, he couldn't have, he couldn't have had it publicly done because it would have looked really bad politically speaking, but, like, it's just so much more haunting if you just know that this person was just disappeared and they are just, like, dead in an unmarked grave somewhere. Yeah. It's true. Like, the tricky thing is that Ursa definitely just disappears and, like, walks out, apparently of her own free will, after, like, calling her little girl a monster or something. So it's really, like, unclear what exactly was up with Ursa, just in the cartoon itself. I long for my children, but I have to wait. To act too soon could seal their fate. They made a vow, their mother will be found. Sonic Underground! Okay. It's time for to pop off. Katara is wearing this little, like, blue, strapless, two-piece corset dress thing that has just some little triangle panels over her enormous titties. <laughs> she finds a weird note from Zuko that's like, Hey, babe, I'm leaving with Aang. We'll be back in two weeks. I miss you. Aang wants to bone Toph again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kick Sokka's ass later. And I love you. Goodbye. Always and forever yours, Zuko. 
And then Mai is suddenly here in Katara's room, like she just appeared, and she's like, Hey, what's up? What's up, Katara? I can't believe he got you some flowers. I was married to Zuko and you never got me flowers. What a dick. <laughs> and then she's like, also surprised, you know, that time he got you a fruit basket? That was me. <laughs> Uh, it was a bad fruit basket. <laughs> I got you a bad orange on purpose. And I somehow made you miscarry. And <laughs> like, there's also this whole thing where like all of these bits that we have of Mai and it's like her eyes are getting smaller and narrower and more upturned and guitars are getting bigger and Barbie-esque. And it's like, damn, Jackie Diaz, I get it. Ooh. Asian features are coded evil. Oh, my God. Not good. No. Nope. Not great, Jackie. Mai just has this villainous monologue and she's like, yes, I took pleaser in doing it and did <laughs> making you miscarry or something. Please, please open this page so you can like look at Katara's weird outfit with me. <laughs> <laughs> I need someone else to try and tell me what's happening with this outfit. I, I am reading ahead to cartwheeling. Yeah. Is it a two piece? Is it intended to be a two piece? I don't think it is. I just don't know. It's basically like the part of this bot dress that is bodycon, like the length of it varies depending on which panel you're looking at. This is true. It's just confusing. It's just confusing to look at. Right. Well, I bet it's only going to get even more confusing because we're about to have an action sequence because Jackie Diaz remembered. Oh, no. That there are action shots in this cartoon that she could trace. Because Mai suddenly throws some knives at Katara. They hit the mirror and Katara cartwheels away. <laughs> and in fact, she cartwheels so hard, she cartwheels out the out window. The window. <laughs> I am once again just imagining this like adult swim style where they just take a still of her and then just rotate it 360 degrees while moving across the screen. <laughs> That's what I'm picturing. It's very much what it looks like. Mai has the incredibly great line of like, get back here. You can't run from me, you little bitch. As she is running from her. <laughs> you can't run from me, you little bitch is so good. <laughs> and then we suddenly smash cut to Toph and Ursa, I guess, who are hanging out together somewhere. Really far away. And Toph yells, Katara, Ursa, come on, we got to go. Someone's here. And Ursa's like, I'll be behind you summoning blue fire. Ursa does the rocket hands thing and rockets also come out of her legs, which <laughs> I don't think is something that she could do in the cartoon, but I guess she got really good. It comes out from under her skirt. There's all sorts of things that could be happening down there. <laughs> she, Look, got she got bored while in hiding. <laughs> and also like, Toph is ostensibly firebending. But she's like just sort of in a pose in a big ball gown on a rock. So I guess they were just hanging out together. And then Toph was like, my Katara senses are tingling. Let's go. <laughs> I sense a bitch. <laughs> and suddenly somewhere else, Sokka has encountered Sho, Mai's evil brother. And he's like, hello, Prince Sokka. He's like, ask yourself this question. Do you have what it takes to save the ones you hold dear? I honestly appreciate Sokka here because he's like, who are you? <laughs> he's just like, I don't know who you are. Why are you asking me these things? <laughs> he's like, I could see that being an in-show thing where they get suddenly fought by somebody who's acting like he knows them. And Sokka's like, what? <laughs> like, that would make so much sense within the cartoon. He's like, That could happen in the show. He's like, We're rivals. And he's like, I don't know your name. Who are you? <laughs> they're just monologuing at him. And he's like, Who even are you? I don't know you. <laughs> like, he does another monologue. He's like, F Mac, do you want to read this page with, like, if you want answers? That one with show? <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I'm okay with that. If you want answers, you'll have to get through me to get them. But I'm here on a personal matter. <laughs> and also, you see, I heard you were a skilled swordsman, and I love challenge. This should be fun. <laughs> so, Prince, don't disappoint me. It's funny how you found the other one. How is your pretty little bed warmer these days? What? <laughs> 
<laughs> what is he saying? <laughs> what does any of that mean? <laughs> You would do well to watch your tongue. What? <laughs> <laughs> this feels like something generated via like generative text, like something generated by <laughs> Chat GPT in terms of just like mimicking the form of something that exists, but like the actual content is nonsense. <laughs> it's like it's any line where you start to think about it for more than five seconds. It just it, it doesn't make any sense. They start fencing and shows like so my poison to Zula, just so you know. But you need to have this information, so let's let's just have me drop that for no reason. <laughs> and they start fencing, and then we cut back to Toph, who's like, come on, Toph, punch it, because- <laughs> Punch it. Oh, God. Because Earth is going faster than her, and she's still in her, like, one pose with a rock. <laughs> <laughs> and then we cut to the best panel of this whole comic. Oh, I love this. <laughs> Sokka, what the hell is going on? How the f*** should I know? <laughs> Katara just runs into frame while they're doing, like, weird midair fencing that doesn't, like, look real at all. It looks like a couple of weird dolls. And she's like, what the hell is going on? And he's like, how the f*** should I know? <laughs> oh, that's so distressingly good. <laughs> and again, it's like, like, none of this looks real. This all looks, like, weird and pantomimed and, like, like he's just floating there in midair. And again, you, like, you'd think how in the cartoon or, like, in any kind of canon it would be great if Sock is like, I have no idea what's going on. This dude keeps monologuing at me. I don't know who he is. Ugh. Oh, and then Jackie Diaz remembered that there are panels that she could use of Katara waterbending. And it's pretty much just like, it is just two poses. Oh, this is terrifying. One of it is from when Katara did bloodbending in the cartoon. That's terrifying. She does waterbending and moves water from one place to another. Toph's house seems to have a whole aqueduct in it now. <laughs> <laughs> As everything gets more dreamlike and less like there's any real geography anywhere, suddenly Azula is here and she's like, oh my god, Sokka, Katara, what's happening? <sighs> and oh no, run Azula. And she's like, oh no, I have to do something, my friends, but what could I do? I'm just a little baby. And the most insulting thing happens, which is that she flashes back to the cartoon as <laughs> memories resurface. And she's like, oh, yeah, I could like I was confident at one point. <laughs> I was at one point really good at killing people. I could kill people like super easy. I was great at it, actually. And we have like this narration where she's like, Uncle Iroh, could I ever want firebend again? And he's like, well, I don't know. Aang sealed off your bending, but maybe if you wanted to protect someone you loved, you could do it. <laughs> oh, it gets better. Azula's like, no, I will save them. I can lightning bend again because I boned Sokka and Katara did my hair and I'm a little wooby baby, but I can <laughs> lightning bend and I'll save them. And <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't even get to fire anything, and then there's a knife in her heart. She just gets stabbed in the chest by a flying knife. And page 69 of this chapter, we get to see it right between her perfect tits. And then she just kind of, like, rotates 90 degrees <laughs> until she's on the ground. And it does in these, like, fade things to imply movement. So it's like the six million dollar man, like, na 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 <laughs> While Zuko's just going, no! <sighs> and she's crying again. Turns out Mai threw a knife right at Azula, landed right, right, right in the sternum, right between her tits. <laughs> First one to scream gets her right between the tits. <laughs> Toph and Ursa finally arrive, and Toph is like, hey, get out of my house, or maybe I'll do something to you. <sighs> I hate Toph Buffon. <laughs> this is specifically Toph Buffon, not Toph Buffon. Correct. <laughs> and Ursa's like, no, my little baby, and rushes to Azula's side, and she's like, mommy, it's hard to breath. 
<laughs> I have a knife in my chest. It definitely punctured a lung or something, but I'm fine, actually. What? Yeah, she's crying, but she can. she's still alive. God damn it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. I thought for sure something interesting was going to happen in this comic, no. and I was swiftly proven wrong. Oh, well, something interesting is about to happen. Oh, God. Because Katara's had it, and she blood bends mine to death. Oh, God. I take it back. <laughs> like, I need you to look at this page where she is like, Yue, forgive me. And Maya's just like bleeding out of her eyes and her mouth. And she's like, stop it, stop it. Ah, and then falls over and just bleeding from every single hole on her body. Oh. Uh. <laughs> because Maya dared to get with Zuko. Yep. This is exactly what happens when you get in the way of somebody's pet ship. Oh, God. And then Toph is like, oh, hey, cool. So remember when bloodbending was like really like a creepy taboo, and like really just a bad thing to do to body Tommy? Can you just like bring your brother over here real quick? Can you just bloodbend your brother away from the original <laughs> character? And Please, thanks. This is fine. Katara's like, yeah, sure. Dope. I need you to see what it looks like when Toph earthbends in this comic, which is her legs are apart in the skirt. And then there's like a picture of, I don't know, some sort of European castle. <laughs> with like wedding chairs set up in the courtyard i'm looking at it now yeah and then i guess that's earth bending i'm just imagining like you know little scuttling noises as she moved from side to side because <laughs> she does her legs are so far apart it looks like a crab and then show is like actually you know what you just blood bended my sister to death and you know i'm done i'm out tapping out bye <laughs> And he just disappears in a burst of fire and swears revenge on Katara. Series wrap on show. <laughs> Back to the knife wound in Azula. Katara tries to do a little healing water bending, but I guess it's pierced her heart and they can't move the blade. Otherwise, it'll kill her, but she's still alive somehow right now, which is interesting because I was pretty sure you needed an intact heart to live. <laughs> and they can't move her either. But Azula does have enough energy left to monologue to Sokka. Mac, would you like to read this page with me? Oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> As Azula looks up with this vacant expression again while crying, she's like, Sokka, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, Azula. I'm sorry I couldn't protect you. But you can't leave me. Stay with me, my love. Stay with me. You know, for the longest time... I can never see how you could cherish someone like me for all that I have done. Living a lifetime like I was dead, I finally know what it's like to live, even though it's at the last moments of my life. Don't say that. You're going to live. Just try not to talk. You're not going anywhere. Again, knife in her chest. It's truly amazing to have been loved by the ones I have hurt the most. But you, who is all things, a kingdom, a family, could still want me. But I do. I love you so much. It's going to kill me if you leave me here without you. Please. Pleasy. <laughs> Don't leave me, Azula. Sokka, at this moment, I will finally stop pretending that I deserve what you have given to me. I can't leave you. I will never leave you. Just say my name, and I will hear you. Knife in her heart. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, you know, I said we can't move her at all because she's really precarious right now, but what if we put her on a boat and took her to the North Pole? <laughs> Okay, so chapter five, Journey to the Spirit World. We start with Zuko and Aang and in the Fire Nation arguing about interracial marriage, which again is really weird for the setting. Yeah. Aang has this pose where he's so fucking bored by this whole thing. But finally, <laughs> Ursa and Iroh show up to let Zuko and Aang know about the knife shit. <laughs> Meanwhile, we cut back to a boat that is made out of the backgrounds from Bilbo Baggins' house. <laughs> Boats are definitely that big. They're definitely that big. Azula's in a knife coma and Katara has a thing where she's like, oh my god, I killed someone. That's not happened before. Oh no, what does it mean? I should have a moral quandary here. And Sokka's like, nah, I was fine. She was a bitch. She stole your man. She's awful. You're a hero. Let's throw you a party. <laughs> <laughs> 
Aang and Zuko arrive in these gigantic cloaks. If y'all want to just take a look at these enormous cloaks oh they're my wearing. God. Oh my god, they're huge. This they're is so like huge. Warhammer 40k shit. <laughs> and Toph is like, y'all, I have some important news. I went into their room and I could hear four heartbeats, even though there were only three people in the room. Azula's progernant. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine Toph on one of those billboards. It's like a baby's heart starts beating at so and so minutes. Later, Toph tries to like talk to Sokka about it. And he's like, Azula's so pretty and perfect and wonderful now. And I love how vapid and giggly she is. And she's like, uh, okay, so your girlfriend's prognant. <laughs> and then he cries because everybody's crying. And it's really hard to see anything because it's all night. So it's all like really, really dark blue. And then we smash cut to Azula, who is now in a mysterious forest where she meets a fairy named Shayu. <laughs> I am looking at this page and I cannot emphasize enough that this is literally just a poser clip art fairy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a single pose of a clip art fairy who announces that Azula is now in the spirit world and has to go find Avatar Roku. And the longer she's in the spirit world, the more she'll forget things. So the fairy is like, okay. Come to meet me and my friend, a picture of a panda. <laughs> Literally just a photo of a panda. <laughs> just a photo of a panda. I think it's supposed to be Heibei. There's this whole thing where, like, they try to explain the longer you're here, the more you'll forget the world of the living. But it's like, yes, but the gravest danger lies before you and to whom that travels here to recover you. Since you are both living and dying, the more you spend here, the more you will start to forget your life and who you are for the world of the living. So the longer I stay here, the more I will die and I won't remember who I was or anyone I know from the world of the living. Oh yes, the more time you spend here, the more you'll forget about your life back in the world of the living. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps going. This feels like a parody. It really, really does. <laughs> the fact that it's just, a, she's talking to a photo of a panda really just pushes it into the realm of this has to be a joke, right? This can't be real. <laughs> Meanwhile, Katara has like the same guilt conversation with Zuko that she had with Sokka about killing Mai and Zuko is like, no, no, she was a bitch. Let's throw you a hero party. <laughs> In the spirit world, Azula has an extended sequence where she follows Shayu the fairy through an evil forest with, like, a monster that I think is just a screenshot from, like, a video game, like an early Silent Hill or something. Everybody travels to the North Pole with Azula. They're, like, trading off healing her so she doesn't get, like, the knife in her heart to break or something. They have baby heads and giant cloaks again. They finally get there. And as they finally get to the North Pole, Azula wakes up at the end of this forest because Shayu has sacrificed itself to save her. And Avatar Roku's here and he's like, I had my most trusted allies bring Azula to me. So like, the photograph of a panda and a fairy were his A-team. <laughs> And he's like, it's so important that you go back to the mortal realm, Azula. And she's like, why? And he's like, you carry the hope of the world. And she's like, oh, so like me, I'm an important chosen one. And he's like, nope, you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> you're pregnant with John Connor, actually. God damn it. Fuck this. Fuck that trope. I hate that trope so much. Fuck this. Oh my god. We finally take everybody to the oasis at the top of the North Pole, which is where in season one, like, it's a magical healing spring. UA became the moon there. <laughs> <laughs> they arrive there and it's really funny because Zuko's like, hey, remember when we were here at the end of season one and, I and we all tried to kill each other? <laughs> Good times. <laughs> They do a trance to go into the spirit world because Sokka has to come bring Azula back because maybe she won't remember, but she'll definitely remember that sweet, sweet dick. <laughs> Sokka, who is fully transformed into Ichigo from Bleach. Oh, God. Jackie Diaz tries to put Sokka's, like, cartoon outfit on him, and it looks really, really terrible. <laughs> he finds Azula really quick in the spirit world, and she's, I think... I think, I think she's supposed to be like sitting with her knees curled up to her chest, but it is deeply unclear what is happening here. Out in the real world, they have Zuko put Azula into the oasis water. Maybe she'll turn into a moon. Back in the spirit world, Azula's like, I don't really remember anything, but I do remember this boy I liked. He had like brown skin and blue eyes. You remind me a little of him. And I love that she is saying this next to Ichigo from Bleach, but brown. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like, you know, you're right. He doesn't really look like Sokka, does he? <laughs> and Sokka's like, I'm here looking for the person I love the most. And she's like, what's she like? Which is an open-ended question. But Sokka chooses to say, well, let me describe her physically to you. What else is there? God damn it. The very first episode of this show we did. <laughs> <laughs> Hey there, Internet. I'm Annie. I'm Kit. And I'm Mac. And welcome to I Will Fight You, a podcast where we've been turning opinion into fact since 1986. This is our inaugural episode, folks. Today's fact we will fight you over is that The Swan Princess, the 1994 animated film, can only be enjoyed by people under six and over 25. Cold hard fact. <laughs> this is the anti-Swan Princess. <laughs> yep. But what else is there? Sokka's like, hey, so can I kiss you? Like, I guess that'll bring your soul back. Can I kiss you? And she's like, huh, okay. And then Katara pulls the knife out of Azula's chest and sobs. And that's the end of the chapter. Smash cut six years later to the <laughs> epilogue. <laughs> oh, God. There are two kids named Kuzan and Lily. One of them is talking about being a fire lord and butterflies. They both look like their Fire Nation outfits, but Lily looks like a Water Tribe kid. We also get two kids in Earth Kingdom clothes, and one of them is named Poe, and he's an airbender. Can you see where we're going with this? Oh my God. Uh, and suddenly, here's a little girl with white hair, and her name's Miracle. God. And here's her parents, Azula and Sokka. <laughs> Azula also has white hair. Azula has white hair now, and I love her water tribe outfit, which looks like it's like a parka, but it's also fur lined, and it also makes sure that she has the biggest titties. <laughs> it is all about that strapless cleavage. <laughs> Sokka has like big long hair now, just sort of smirks at people. Daddy and mommy are here. Zuko and Katara's kids, their names are Kuzan. I forget what the girl's name is, but I guess Katara just was going to keep using that name until it stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Toph still has that weird vacant expression, calling her children sweeties, which again, not what Toph does. <laughs> she canonically, in an episode of Legend of Korra, yells at her girls for <laughs> causing her trouble. And we have the ending narration, which is like, our journey didn't stop after the war, and Katara and Zuko loved each other, like the moon and the sun or something, and Aang loved Toph, and Toph loved Aang, and we're heroes, and I have a beautiful daughter who's named Miracle, and she'll marry the Water Tribes, and if our children will say... I lived in the time of heroes. The oh end. Oh my god. I love how like this started as like a Zuko Katara thing, and then like the writer very clearly got entirely distracted by this whole Sokka Azula plot <laughs> to the point where it just overwrote everything. Yeah, it's even Azula's ending narration. Now, there is a sequel to this. Oh god. Do you ever think about Seduce Me Too, The Demon War as a title? Yeah. Well, this one's called How I Became Yours. Rise of the Agni Army! <laughs> oh boy. There's a movie-style cover poster that exists. May is on it. It has another poll quote that says, It's a beautiful evocation of the nature found in glory and heroes. Those aren't- that's not- that's not a sentence. <laughs> not a sentence. That's word soup. <laughs> My it seems to have come back from the dead. Show is here. It seems to be all about these original character kids who are all adults now. Only a couple of pages ever seem to have actually been made. The plot of this is a complete mystery, and I love it that way. And that's how I became yours. It's everything. <laughs> it's it's the it's it's everything that an Avatar fan fiction could be. <laughs> Oh, I'm tired. I'm weary now, Annie. I think so much about this. I also made sure because it has been hosted and rehosted and rehosted several times, I made sure to save all of these now. So now I just have it on my hard drive, just in case. <laughs> you just have your own personal copy of How I Became Yours. In the interest of anthropological preservation. <laughs> I now have my own copy of How I Became Yours. You could bind, like, a physical version if you really wanted to. I really could. It would be so low res and beautiful. 
So that's me. So that's how I became yours. That's an incredible fan comic. That is, it is just, it is everything that the Avatar fandom could do and did and got really, really weird about. And I love it. Everything happened so much. Everything happened so much. Sokka, what the hell is going on? How the f*** should I know? <laughs> the most, the most in-character thing Sokka says to us this entire comic. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I fully believe Sokka is like the only one of the Avatar characters who should be allowed to say f***. <laughs> you know, I feel like he would be responsible about it. And by that, he would be completely irresponsible about it. Yeah, Toph would, but permission has been revoked. <laughs> Toph said f*** too many times. Toph said f*** too many times and she lost f*** privileges. <laughs> Toph's in timeout. That's how I became yours. You know what? I can't do anything except prove that the Avatar fandom got weird because it made this. <laughs> <laughs> this case in point. QED. So that means it's time for our final facts. Kit, what's your final fact? If you don't want your fandom to turn into a coyote gnawing its own leg off, you need to have more than one girl in your principal cast. <laughs> <laughs> Mac, what's your final fact? So there's this thing about, like, tracing things that Key once told me, which is so long as you don't claim it as your own art, you're okay. And I was doing some research here in the background where apparently Jackie Diaz just kept claiming that she, no, no, she didn't trace the art. She drew it. It's all original creations. Don't worry that it's sell for sell the same exact something else. Just do it. Keep it to yourself. Don't try to make it yours and reference what you traced and you're good. Annie, what's your final fact? Listen. Just put your whole ass in your indulgent fanfic. <laughs> just, just put, this is, there's so much effort put into this comic. Put effort into your indulgent ass fanfic. You deserve it. Make whatever bullshit you want, because How I Became Yours exists. <laughs> you got a free pass, my man. Also, real quick, remember those toys that they tried to release for Avatar The Last Airbender, but they didn't release any female characters because they said that boys went and buy girl dolls? Yep. So that means that they had, like, Aang, Sokka, Sokka with war paint, and then <laughs> one that was, like, a King Boomy doll, and one that was Aang, but his head was popped off of the Aang doll and put onto the Sokka doll, so it was, like, Aang in water tribe paint. That's what this comic's like. <laughs> and that I think is going to do it for us folks <laughs> we don't have our next topic prepared to you but it is going to be Kit's pick so join us for something delightful next time <laughs> join us for some unspeakable thing I'm going to inflict on these two <laughs> you know it's it, we, we just kind of trade we kind of trade <laughs> that around it's fine <laughs> I Will Fight You comes out every five weeks. You can find it wherever you download podcasts. We are edited by Lucas Brown of The Math of You. If you would like to support us, a like, rating, review, subscribe, wherever you find our content is good, helps us get discovered. If you want to talk to us, we are currently on social media at CRC Podcasts. We also have a Discord, and all of our information about us can also be found at our website, which is crookedrussiancam.horse or crookedrussiancam.gay. Any other social feeds that we have will be listed on there at some point. Don't worry about it. If you would like to support us with money, that is at patreon.com slash the gem jam, where you can get early episodes of I Will Fight You, as well as show notes for I Will Fight You, as well as things from our other shows, Date Me Damn It and Gem Jammer. Join us next time, where we will have another incontrovertible fact for you <laughs> that we'll definitely think way too much about. <laughs> and until then, I'm Annie. I'm Kit. And I'm Mac. And we have fought you. And the amount of money they're spending on this f***ing thing when there are people who can't afford to heat their houses or buy groceries, it's just bullshit. Yeah, I definitely remember hearing that it was going to be like, oh yeah, it's just going to be a subdued ceremony because, you know, the economy. And then he was like, oh no, oh no, no, no. I waited so long. Mother is dead. Mother is finally dead. I waited so long for this. I'm only going to be monarch for five years before I die of old age for spending all the money. <laughs> oh, God, it's so fucked. It's so bullshit.